All right, we're going, we're going to uh, go ahead and get the Conservation Commission meeting started here. Uh, just before we start, I'm going to remind everyone to silence your devices if you have uh, any on. And um, yeah, my name is Nick Kremp. I'm the conservation agent. I started a couple weeks ago, so if I'm an unfamiliar face, that's why. But glad to get started here. And uh, be nice, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for now at least. Yeah, you can hard, harden up in a little bit. But um, yeah, so we can go ahead and get it started. Uh, do a roll call. Do a roll call. Um, I don't know if Amanda Lansing is in. On it, so um, Ken Rislin, present. Uh, Liz Ritchie, here. Um, Mike Seeking, here. Uh, Richard Gullick, here. And Chuck Raymond, here. Okay. So we have five of our six current numbers, uh, with Jeff Gorn being absent. Yeah. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chuck. All right, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Chuck Raymond, I'm the, I'm the chairman. Um, one, if for any, uh, we do have a quorum for, for, for any continued hearings. Um, we will only have four. Uh, Ken, Ken, this is his first meeting. He'll have to um, recuse himself from any 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 votes on continued um, hearings. Anyway, jumping right in. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wilderness Protection Act, the Lumberstick Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the construction of a billboard. That's what you mentioned. I didn't read this carefully enough. In associated site work, address 152 Hamilton Street, map and parcel. 238-5, DEP file number 199-1159. Uh, who's here to pre pre present on that? Yeah, good evening, uh, Patrick McCarty, McCarty Engineer. How do you guys prefer, at the table or on the board? We, uh, probably up there. Okay. Or, <laughs> are you shy? Am I shy? No, please. Okay. I haven't been in front of this commission in a while, but I have several times. So, um, yeah, oh, up here, just, just just because more people can see it. Yeah, sure. So, green cards. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Oh, thank thank you. you, thank you. So, uh, Patrick McCarty, McCarty Engineering, here tonight, um, filed a notice of intent. Just to orient everybody, this is Hamilton Street, here along the top of the page. Uh, Copley Family Dental, Roachford Law Offices, Doors Unlimited in the back there, and then the dome. The old military dome with the used car lot is here. Is that what that is? The old military dome? Yeah. I had no idea. Leaks like a zip. So <laughs> I know that. No, that was that I had no idea what that was. So, uh, and that's Route 2 down at the bottom? Yeah, Route 2 here at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Yep. So we have the wetlands delineated by Echo Tech from Worcester. Whitman and Bingham Associates did an existing condition survey for us. And back uh, just pre COVID, we submitted a special permit application to the Zoning Board of Appeals to construct a pole-mounted billboard sign. At this location, the special permit was granted, and then, of course, COVID and everything else slowed down. So we're circling back to this project. So we've submitted a notice of intent. This is the existing Doors Unlimited uh, building with the addition that was constructed a couple years ago on the back. The yellow highlighted line is the existing edge of pavement. Wetland flag numbers certainly located here. And this is all manicured lawn area now. What we're proposing is just to drill a five foot diameter hole, 24 feet deep. I'm sure you're gonna ask the question. So that's gonna generate about 20 yards of material out of the hole, which is equivalent to one, say, Mack dump truck load of soil to come out of the hole. They would put a three foot diameter steel pole down into that hole. So you'd have a, a foot of space around it and below it that they would pump concrete into, and that's what secures the pole in place. So very limited impact. Uh, at the surface, so we're proposing just a, a small section of erosion control here so that they can work right off the edge of the pavement, drill the hole, put the soil in the truck, and take it away, and then just put some crushed stone around the base of that. It is all nice sandy gravel in this area, so. Patrick, what's the diameter again? That is a 36 inch diameter. Okay. Welcome to the commission tent, by the way. Nice to see you. So, pretty no, straight. No right. power trench going up to it. Ah, uh, you're right. There would be a power trench that would come across to the building, most likely. The uh, the app, unfortunately, the applicant that originally was going to propose this with COVID has kind of slowed down, but we still want to continue with the permitting, and then we're going to talk to some of the other big, uh, you know, sim similar to what you see on 290 and Worcester, like when you get to where it used to be Greendale, those high shaped yep. pole mounted signs. Is it lit at night? It is. Yep. 
We just like small we, bites. If we, if we can save the questions till we till we. Oh, oh I, sorry, sorry. I appreciate it. Thank you. So that that's really oh, it. Is that, oh, yeah, okay. pretty straightforward. And our, our opinion, just drilling a hole in the ground. There was one comment from DEP asking if we were proposing any clearing in the wetland or not. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions. Can I come up to the board real quick? Absolutely. Just so you can see what I'm pointing at? Yep. Where do these go? What's this line? That's 100 foot five. That is 100 foot Okay. Yep. So there's one on the other side, too. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a. So this is. Um, this wetland actually kind of circles back and comes along here. And then you can see it as you're driving west on Route 2. It kind of opens up closer to the river. And then it runs parallel to the highway, comes in here behind Copley's building. And then goes back out and continues. It kind of meanders along the edge of Route Two there. Okay. Um, good question about the condo line, by the way. Um, yep. Was asking. What was my other question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the line. Oh. Uh, so the 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 so this, the the spoiler comes out of the hole again. Right into the trapping gun. Yep. And I live not too far from there. I drive past this place. I used to go to the gym across the street. Mm -hmm. Used to being the key term. Yeah, good for you. I never went there. I tried a couple of times. So. Aren't there a bunch of piles of soil out there now? I've been for a while. That's further up. Oh, it's for, okay. It's not you. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all, those are those are my my only questions. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Do a check. Straight. Commissioner Delson. Okay, so the, the, I guess the, the commission has more, uh, no more questions than anybody. Do the audience have any questions for the applicant? Uh, if so, please identify yourself by name and address, please. No one? Okay, thank you. Huh? Okay. Go ahead and, and, uh, and, and close the hearing. Um, Nick, uh, what, 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 what are your what do you uh, have for us? Uh, I went out to the site, uh, like just how we described this whole crushed stone out there right now, it's kind of on the edge of. Uh, where the plants start to grow and mm -hmm. digging a hole, there's not going to be a big concrete pad at the base of it. You know, it sounds like pretty low impact as far as build up mm -hmm. boards go. So I would uh, move to, or I would suggest the board or the commission moves to approve. Okay. So. All right, good. Then, then uh, we'll come back up. Oh, yeah, but might just stay, might just stay there. That's <laughs> 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 yeah. I feel, right? Uh, then I'll, uh, based on, on Nick's recommendation, I'll take a motion to uh, to uh, approve, approve the. Uh, the project. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second? I'll second it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so, Rich? What's your? Aye. Aye. Ken? Abstain. Abstain. Chuck? Why are you abstaining? This is a new hearing, isn't it? Well, this is new. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is all we're hearing yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Michael? Yes. Okay. And Chuck? I vote aye. Aye. So, motion passes uh, five, yeah, five zero. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great to see you. All right. Moving on. Pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and Mass Jewish Laws Protection Act, the Lemmerston Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the construction of a residential subdivision and associated site work. Address Pierce Street, Map and Parcel 57 1, DP file number 199 1156. Who is here to present on that? Oh, Sorry about that. Good. You change. Good evening. My name is Anthony Cleves. I'm with Healing Board, um, representing Great Realty Trust. As was mentioned, we're here uh, for a 13 lot residential subdivision off of Pier Street. If you're familiar with uh, the Pier Street area, this is about 300 feet past Joslin Street. Joslin Street would be here. Um, if you're coming from, say, behind Manusnock Country Club, you see that on your left, you continue. You would take a left on Joslin to get up to the Apple Hill Farm. Continue just a little bit past that, about 300 feet, and you have um, a turn there at Pier Street. We're just um, on the other side of that, that turn there. Um, for reference, we printed this out from the Lemons of GIS to help see the area. So, Uh, 
so the parcel is um, denoted in red. Uh, that's the, the land. Um, it's uh, currently a wooded, uh, wooded lot. About 55 to 60 acres of, of land. Again, vacant, wooded. We're proposing to come in off that, the turn in Pier Street. Uh, we have wetlands on the north and eastern side. So wetlands here, kind of highlighted in purple around the project. There's also a pocket that comes in um, from the south. Orange it is the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetlands. So as you can you can see uh, the green is kind of the uh, disturbed area. The road is in gray houses are in, in brown. The majority of the project is outside of the 100 foot wetland buffer zone. Um, it's about 14 or 15 percent of the buffer zone that's actually disturbed and uh, that no impervious surface is in the buffer zone you have grading associated with the road as you come in here on the left and then the stormwater basin down in the low part of the site um, is where most of the buffer zone work takes place but roadway house lots everything else we kept outside the 100 foot buffer zone and you may, so right here we have this black line here. This is the, the lot configuration. So as you can see, then you have this area all out here, remaining land um, of the property. I'm not planning on developing that. That land is going to be considered open space. So we have about about seventy five percent of the lot is going to be designated as open space. Utilities to connect, we have water and sewer will be brought up and tying into the existing municipal water and sewer on Pier Street at the intersection of Jocelyn Street. Stormwater would be conventional catch basin to main hole configuration, uh, bring the stormwater down to the end of the cul-de-sac and then cross country to the stormwater basin um, off to the, to the north. Proposing erosion control barriers all on the downhill side of all the construction disturbance. Everything from here, all the way along, all the way along here. But also what we've added on this, if you can see it from that far away, we have some cross hatching shown here. Basically everywhere we have a three to one slope or steeper, we're calling for erosion control blankets uh, to make sure we don't have any issues with the slope sliding uh, at all during construction until they get stabilized. Portion of lot one, we have a little bit of, of grading in the buffer zone. We're not filing at this time for any of the lots. This is really just for the subdivision road. So um, if this ends up having to, to get within the buffer zone, the development of this lot would have to come before you for an RDA or NOI if they do go in that buffer zone. Or if anything else would have to go on something we've already shown, but as you can see, Trying to stay pretty far away from that 100 foot buffer. We got a DEP file number, uh, no comments were listed in DEP's issuance of the file number. That's a brief overview for you. Do you have any questions? Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I don't mean to be critical. I've got it anyway. Yeah. Um, you could get more creative and dig a hole in the ground for the snowmar. Yeah. So the, the, the trouble we had with this site is topography. Yeah. It's a very steep site. Okay. Um, and so you can see, it's tough to see it from there, but we have very steep contours here. This was what kind of a flatter area um, to create the stormwater basin. We chose that area to try and limit overall land disturbance. When you start to try and grade in a stormwater basin in a steep slope, it's like a six to one slope. You have a lot of cut a lot of fill, so your actually land disturbance increases um, quite a bit. So we were trying to limit overall land disturbance and try and keep that as, as small as possible, which is why we, we chose that location here. The topography flattens out a little bit more. Well, that's not really what I was, what I was getting at, was maybe something a little more, instead of a, a one central location to dump all your stonewater, something more distributed through low impact development, something along those lines. That's kind of what I was getting at. So, I mean, low impact development, you know, typically you're talking Country drainage, no curbs, swales. And by the way, all that stuff, man. Yeah. yeah, so that's not going to help us with offsetting the pre and post rate of runoff. Okay. You need 
you're typically going to have your open detention basin or an underground detention system. Mm -hmm. But detention is what you need to, to meet your pre and post rates of runoff. Okay. Um, so that's where you find typically um, an open stormwater basin. Had, had has anything like LID been considered? Or was that just simply not, not even? No, I mean, look, again, the LID typically for residential subdivisions is going to be clustering, yeah. which is what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's That was the main LID component we looked at. Again, 70, almost 75% of the land should remain open space. Mm -hmm. that's, you don't get much more low impact development than, than that. Otherwise, with subdivisions, you're looking at again, country drainage, so you have no curbing, no catch basins, mm -hmm. goes off the road into swales, you have culverts underneath all of the roads. Typically, it's not a preference in the city of Leominster for that. Um, Long-term maintenance, um, but we're not gonna get a lot of benefit from that. You're not gonna get a lot of infiltration. These are not really good soils, C and D soils throughout here. Um, so, we chose to go more Kind of cluster, get everything as tight as we can, minimize the development as our low impact development, keeping it small. How big of a lot? Um, Ish. About an acre. About an acre. About an acre. All right. And so again, yeah, that's what's. Uh, you know, we have over over forty acres of designated open space. Okay. Yeah, obviously with, with minimal impact to the, I mean, no impact to the well is a minimal impact to the buffer. That was that, that was that was my question having to do with that stormwater management. I want to make sure that, that all right. Yeah, that was our that was our biggest thing is trying to just stay out of the buffer zone as much as we could. Um, it's kind of the best we think the best low impact development you can do. So that's what we tried to achieve here. All right. All right. Uh, that's the only question I had. Anybody, anybody else in the commission area? Yeah. How fresh? Where does the where's the um, the basin uh, located in comparison to the to the existing houses that are there? I'm looking at oh, yeah, so, yeah, so you have a, there's a subdivision for it. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that was the Williams and Martin Massapoic subdivision. So we are, this is the property line of okay. the Williams and Massapoic subdivision right here. So, okay. so that's quite a ways. Yeah, a couple hundred feet. Um, you know, so this is this is 100, another 100 to the property line, and those lots along the Williams and Massapoic sit, sit up higher, so there's probably another... 100 feet or so before you get to those houses, so 200 feet away. Okay, and the rock. Yeah. is it all sandy gravel? No, what's in the house or a lot of ledge? Um, mm -hmm. No, it's mostly um, C and D soil, so not, not ledge that we're aware of. Okay, um, let's see, we had mostly the Massachusetts state soil, Paxton. Uh, which has to be fine to have the Paxton soil. Yes, am I? Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure I see you being here. Are you um, pumping up stormwater from one side to the other? No, it's all by gravity. It's all by gravity. Yeah. All things downhill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, really, uh, where's where's this particular location? It's not up here. Um, so, see this? Let's go around. Yep. So, mm -hmm. this is how it's sitting. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one other question if I can. You mentioned uh, designated open space. Um, how is that designated? So right we're just is that has just been designated, designated by you guys or is it just yeah, so change later or is it there's there's no be part of the planning board process? Um, you know, kind of go through if it goes to the city, if it goes to a land trust. I don't know if that's been determined. Um, who, who, who yeah, yeah. Well, association. Homeowners association. Yeah, I'm curious how it would be, and I would assume that the neighbors would be curious also. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So it would be um, not part of development of the subdivision except for the stormwater base, which is an easement shown for that. Um, so for assuming the city takes over the subdivision, they have the right to get in there and maintain that. But specific designation for who would get the open space hasn't been. Determine, and I don't know that there's a real preference to be honest. Yeah. Okay. On, on past subdivisions, um, one most recently, Mary Ave, um, you get somebody new here may remember that one. Um, that one was going to be part of the homeowners association in that particular case because the city was not even going to take over that subdivision. But I don't believe that's really been determined, and it's up for 
discussion. Yeah, as you, as you may may not know, at least a year ago, um, a particular land trust came before us to try to get an easement on that entire property. Oh. And the property owner didn't want to sell for below market rate, so that's thus thus oh. you're here tonight. Okay. That I, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know about the rest of the question, but that would have been my preferred my preferred option. But that ship has sailed. So, I mean, I get to you. This is our first uh, public hearing with any of the boards yet. Um, so I'm sure that'll be part of the discussion with the planning board as well. So if there's any preferences, I'm sure happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll I'll probably let that play out. But I think if, yeah. if, if if any kind of an easement or conservation restriction came upon came came to us, we would I would probably say we'd be in favor of. Of, of that. Is the subdivision going to be managed by an HOA? Probably not. No, the intent would be to have the city take it over uh, upon construction. Mm -hmm. Liz and Ken, any more questions? Ken, you all set? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, the commission, uh, that's it for the commission questions. I'll open up to the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please feel free to do it. Please state your name and address before you do it. Can you hear me with my mask on? Yes. Okay. My name is Fred Longenecker. My wife and I live in 90 Dobson Circle, which is one of the development homes in line with uh, number two, lot number two, straight down. Uh, when we bought that lot uh, about seven and a half years ago, we were told by Lascotti Development that was going to be uh, put in the development that there was there was no development allowed behind us into that wooded area, which is where this is. So we're trying to figure out one thing, why has that changed? Uh, obviously it has. Uh, I understand from one of my neighbors who is a lawyer who is practicing here in town that, that what may have been approved is 10 lots. There are 14 lots here. We're trying to figure out what happened at their extra lot. Uh, we, we appreciate the wooded area, the, the wildlife, the, the 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 separation from noise and other 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 noises in the, in the area, and we're concerned that this is going to create more disturbance for us. We particularly bought that land, and as did our neighbors, because it was we thought protected. So that's where we're coming from. I imagine there may be others in similar uh, situations. I don't see any of my direct neighbors here, but I imagine some of these folks may have comments as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, um, Linda Sango. I live at 494 Pier Street. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is not the first time that you've tried to put development in there. We are still concerned with the impact on Massapog, the wildlife. We have bears, we have uh, bobcats, we have all kinds of animals there. We already had a lot of destruction of trees. From a lot across the street from us, which has all kinds of runoff going down the road, which is supposed to have been fixed, but that's another issue. Um, we're worried about the air quality. We're worried about the traffic. We're worried about all the streams going into Massapod and eventually destroying Massapod. As it is now going across from on Jawson, from Jawson Street, where Shepherd's Field is. There's runoff going in there. He's always trying to fix that field up because it's always being That's run where the off. Barn is. Yes, where the barn is. I mean, this. Sorry. I mean, this. We're just. We're all from Pier Street, and we're just worried. So as it is, as it is, we've had such an impact in traffic when the Bemis Road bridge went down and people found the way. They're going to come in more so through Dobson Street and everything else. It's just going to evolve. There's agricultural protection land. We're worried about that being now bought out, paid back taxes and so on, and that become a big development. So this little thing is going to impact an awful lot. So that's what I have to say. Other people have comments. Mr. Chairman. Please. Um, one one comment that, that caught me was a concern of traffic from Dobson. Just to make make clear, this is not proposed to connect to Dobson. At this point in time. Correct. We have open space proposed between that subdivision. Where is Dobson on the map? Where is Dobson? Down there. Yeah. 
Thoughts on that that GIS? And this is Massapog Road. Okay. So we're we're over here. Right. So but it would have to cross the wetlands. It would have to cross two wetlands. We'd have to cross wetland system here and then the wetland system that's behind the houses on the opposite. Right. Ma'am, with, 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 without nothing in front of us, we're going to be, I, I'm probably taking a chance at talking hypothetically, but if, they, if, if somebody were to come before us with a, with a proposal to connect those two streets going across two wetlands, we would not look kindly upon that. Right, but we also have a house down the street that had wetlands and a brook running through earlier that has been filled in and there's a house. So, you know, you can say this, but we have observed it being yeah. ignored and houses being built. A house being built. Okay. So, I mean, you know, and again, I, I just appreciate the comment. I just want to make clear our proposal tonight is not to connect that in. Understand your concerns and how developments do change over time. But if this were to change at any time, we're back before this commission again, planning board again, and then you can continue to voice concerns. But just wanted to be clear, we are not proposing a connection to that subdivision. Again, we're trying to stay as much out of that buffer as, as we can. And there's a possibility if there is ledge. My house is built on ledge. Mm -hmm. I would I would suggest you this you said this is your first meeting period. Follow follow this and, and, and go to the various zoning and planning and whatever okay. go go to those meetings too. Because they they uh, our concern is, is, is wetlands. Right. Uh, so I, as much as I'd like to, bears and coyotes and everything else, that's nothing to do with us, unfortunately. It's not conservation land. We, so, so we have our, there's not much we can do with your concerns, and I really appreciate it. Trust me, I feel like you do. I'd rather not see this go in, but there's, it's permittable, so, you know. Which is too bad for people who have just bought homes and have been told, you know, you're safe, don't worry about it, and Man. this turns around. And how, how long ago was that house built? In the wetland area? Uh, about 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Was the house built in the wetland? Uh, that it's, it's what you say, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been at first, you know, they started filling in a little bit, and then they filled in a little bit more, and then eventually it was the house. So, I mean, more well, like, come on. You know, I mean, it's just what I'm saying. Okay. Is, you know, you have these laws, and you're supposed to be conserving the wetlands and, and the animals that live there, yeah. and, and let's say salamanders. That was an issue that was brought up years ago that there might be protective salamanders in there, but I don't know how that finished up. But then we, we, we would need a, we'd need a, a, a certified yes, vernal pool, and I, I can almost guarantee there's no vernal pools in there, so. Um, and there are vernal pools around. Well, but they, they have to be certified by the state. So, I mean, if, if you if you I, have some, we walk through there all the time. If you, if, then, then I would call a DEP and get it certified. Okay. That 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 may, that may be a step you you, you want to take. I'll have to see about that. Yeah, look into that. All right. Uh, anybody else? Uh, sir. Yeah, uh, Glenn Shepard. I live at 388 PS Street right now. So, I, if I be it for me to tell somebody what to do with their land, I get it. Uh, my biggest complaint right now with what goes on in that corner is uh, as Linda was saying we get an awful lot of water in the corner and it she drains across my field which uh, is hard enough to keep uh, uh, usable as it is with the uh, so uh, I guess that would be my uh, you know what the board has to do regarding all the other drainage and all that issue, but that drainage there is not very good. And I certainly hope that's so, so you, not. You're talking right, right across the corner right, right here? Right, yeah. If you get over to Jocelyn sometime, come down with drainage. Um, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of water there. So uh, I guess that would be one of the things that I don't know how your uh, uh, criteria works, what we, what we could work with and make sure that the the drainage there doesn't get worse uh, than it already is because we've had some issues further down the street where um, the developments uh, give us a little icy patch in the winter. Uh, so that would be my uh, uh, 
point out somebody that's lived there for quite some time and uh, there's some issues with the drainage there. Anthony is, uh, I, I, I know that's why I saw my flags. I live right down the street and I see that area. I know it's tough to mow through there and the whole bit. Can, would it, so I can, would, sorry, yeah. would, would it be possible to, to amend your plan to, to try to address stormwater going across the street there? Right, from I the can't see your cuts there. So we need the development to drive down into the correct. The, uh, correct. So, we have, so we have catch to, to keep the, the situation from getting even worse. So we have catch basins here at the end of the road yeah. okay. to intercept the water, and everything goes down here. Okay. So you'll have a little bit at the entrance of the road um, that that we can't capture uh, just due to the to, to depth and road rating. So that everything else that would come go through the back of the lots come and get to the road system, it's intercepted by uh, the stormwater system. Uh, so the, 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 the part above, above the road is coming down the hill, correct? Yeah, so this is high. Everything, everything right slopes down, down this okay. way. Okay, so 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 the, the bottom side of the street, that's all going to the wetlands anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. so everything everything here kind of going this way. This is all yeah, going right. this way. Okay. This all kind of goes. So. The bulk of the water from this project gets to the, to the wetlands here on our property. Uh, so again, we, we have some catch basins here at the beginning of the road um, to, to intercept that. And then we get into some detail. This catch basin here, we're proposing a double catch basin. Um, because as you can tell, this, the water is coming this way. So you're not going to get much water going back into the road from this side because it's the cut side, it's the low side. You're just intercepting the road runoff. This side, we're probably going to get the runoff that comes from from Mr. Shepherd's property here. That is the, his that, that's water. Right. His yeah. water comes onto our property, um, and then so that gets into the roads. So we're putting a double catch basin there to try and intercept more of that water uh, to keep it from going on to the street. How, how far are those catch basins off of uh, the street? Off the, yeah, I can the, I the street understand here. that. Yeah, as I remember it, the barn is higher than where that street entrance is, so the water is yeah. going to come down the street. And okay. I can see why that would be a concern with that corner right there. Probably 75 feet. So it's a very small, very small area. It's not, it's not the, the water doesn't come off the land. It comes off the, the high surface. I don't know where your inflection point is on the road going up, but I can say from Jocelyn, from further down Pearson, right in front of my house, it all goes to that corner. Right, so we're not doing anything in Pier Street that's existing right. stormwater issues. We're not fixing any of that. There's water that's coming down, we're not, okay. we're not fixing any of that. But you can see it's concerned from putting a road there, where essentially it could be shoving more stormwater across the road. So. No, I understand that, but I just want to point out, most of the subdivision is going down. Okay. It's going away from the road, except for this entrance here okay. at the beginning. Okay. But even at the beginning, I took a walk through there. At the beginning, it, it drops off pretty, pretty good. Uh, you're holding on, going down. Excuse me. What about the fertilizer we had from all the homes? Do the homes have to use phosphate-free fertilizer? So all of that fertilizer would impact the wetlands. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no requirements. That, excuse me. It's okay. To, no, 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 no requirements that we're aware of that restricts any resident in the city of Lemons to, to fertilize their lawn. Uh, it's not a um, designated sensitive area um, that would have additional regulations for that. You know, I, I used to live in Falmouth, and they had, I don't know if it was a town requirement day, but they had, they strongly encouraged homeowners to use organic fertilizers. You want to put a motion through to have the city do that? That You're more than welcome to do that, but, no, but there's no, there's but no have, requirement. Are they going to do right. something to help it? No. I'm sorry, ask that again. Would that be something that they would... Um, work to avoid in their catch basins or whatever they're doing so it wouldn't get into the water? So we're not, I can't we also, you remember some kind of uh, oh, in the ground treatment to root? So, something that would, you know, resist the, for all the fertilizer that's going to impact all that the wetlands. Great, but that's so it's growing in the right that doesn't work. That's growing, it doesn't work. Nothing works. Yeah. So uh, it's just all going to go into the intended. Well, you collect some water and if you're, you're concerned I'm sorry, with, 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 with the too much cross stock, if we can hold off, please. Rich, go ahead. Just asking if there were plants in your catch basin. No. Soak up nutrients. If I, if I can, Mr. Chair. Again, we, we've designed this to meet the EPA stormwater management standards. Um, so those, you know, one of those standards is water quality, and so it is designed to meet that standard. 
which involves deep sump hooded catch basins, intercepting the stormwater during collection to settle out some of the sediments and oils and gases that would get stuck there. And then it's going to go through the after the stormwater basin, which is designed as an infiltration basin with a floor bay, further separating sediment and pollutants. And, and there's an outlet in this basin that's up above the bottom of the basin to promote infiltration and further treatment. So this is designed to meet the EP stormwater management standards. Okay. And what is the capacity of the, the basin? So it's designed for a 100-year storm. And what I mean by that is, so standard number two of the, of the uh, stormwater standards is to make sure your post-rate of runoff does not exceed your pre-rate. And you have to analyze the 210, 25, typically in a 100-year storm. So this is designed such that the rate of runoff leaving the site post-construction is not more than pre up to the 100-year storm event. For treatment and recharge, um, that standard is based upon the one half inch rainfall is what you base the treatment volume and recharge volume on per the standards. And what's the 100 year rated at here? What's the 100 year slope of it? 7.23, I think it is, which is. In 24. In 24 hours, correct. Yeah, which is. 7.2 it. Yeah, which has changed over the years. You may, may be aware of that. Um, with so the NOA Atlas 14 precipitation rates, uh, the rainfall amounts have gone up. In the past, in limits, there used to be 6.7 um, inches over 24 hours, so it's up to 7.23 now. Can you show um, the audience and the board where the 100 foot buffer line is? Yep, so the, the highlighted in orange huh? is the 100 foot buffer line. So, our only jurisdiction is between that buffer line and into the wetland, basically, mm -hmm. for those who are asking mm -hmm. what this board can actually do. Right. So, the, the planning board will can have more impact, I believe. Planning and zoning. And, and, zoning. Yeah. and, and your wish is as right. opposed to what we can do to protect the, the wetland there. Mm -hmm. Correct. They're doing what they would normally be required to do, as far as I can tell. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, not address your concerns with this. <laughs> I, hope, I hope we at least can to, uh, educate you on, 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 on what, what our jurisdiction is and, and, the, 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 and the limits of that. Sure. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, I do have a question. Um, I did. I've come across uh, in DEP stormwater handbook. They do mention that for best practices, it should be uh, any retention basins should be 50 feet from the head, like surface water is the Commonwealth. It is. But that so the bottom of the basin is 50 feet away from is more than 50 feet away from the wetlands. So it's not you're grading. Okay. So that requirement is for the water reaching okay. down into the ground. Mm -hmm. That needs to be 50 feet. Yeah. Not the grading to create the berms and things like that. It's where the water gets infiltrated down into the ground. It's the actual inside the bottom floor of the basin. Yeah, so because it's, it's tied to infiltration. You don't want to have right. an infiltration practice right next to you know um, right next to a wetland uh, or a surface water or a stream or, or a steep slope because you're gonna have issues with that right. that water leading through. But yeah, so that's why we set that. 50 feet. Um, good point, but good. And the, good catch on. And the bottom of the basin should be two feet above the yes. high water yep. mark. What is the what's the level right now? Yeah. So this bottom. basin, um, the bottom of the basin is set at elevation four, uh, 370. Sorry. 370. Yeah. And the existing to part the existing contour is 370, mm -hmm. and then it slopes down. So most of this basin is actually built and filled to make sure that we have that stormwater separation. Um, there's a note in the plan set um, and in the, in the conservation documents that um, we're calling to have a test pit done mm -hmm. during construction to confirm that. Didn't want to go in and clear a path right now to, to go dig a test hole um, for, for that. So this basin is set above the existing grade. So unless groundwater is six inches below the surface, uh, we'll have that two feet of separation. And then the other thing is the handbook also says that the basin should be constructed of fill. Right. It shouldn't be constructed on fill. What, on what, fill. what that means right. is if you had an existing site, earth was moved around, um, you don't want to construct it on that fill because it's going to settle um, and things like that. So on our detail sheet, I think it's the last page or second to last page, we show the basin detail and what you do to fill the basin and fill. Mm -hmm. The fill is septic sand. So it's going to be free draining. 
Um, it's not going to worry about settling it. Mean, that, that's how you build the basin. In when you're building a basin, and fill. what that that is meant to say is, don't build it on top of pre-existing fill. But it's not. We're not bringing in common fill. It's not moving earth around mm -hmm. and then throwing some fill in there. It's septic system same. The other thing you have to worry about um, is you don't want to over compact right. the fill you put in below the basin because now you're going to restrict the infiltration characteristics of the soil. Septic system sand, you don't have to worry about like that. But it's septic system sand. Okay. Uh, yep. And you said you had no comments from DEP? No, that's correct. All right, and one last check. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Okay. All right, with that, I'll go ahead and, and, and close the hearing. If I, if I can, oh, sure. Uh, not that, the hearing. I, not that I wouldn't love to have the hearing closed. Okay. Oh, okay. But procedurally, I don't know if it's worth keeping it open because we haven't been to the planning board yet. But I, would, I would hate to have something come up in the planning board and for some reason it changes something. Not that I don't, I don't expect that. But I'd hate to yeah. have the hearing closed and then you guys can't comment on something the planning board brought up. Okay. Unless, unless you guys think that otherwise. Okay. Yeah, no, that's I love getting hearings closed and moving on, but I don't want to get us all in a pinch if planning board has something that comes up that could impact what you guys have seen tonight. Okay. So procedurally, I don't know. So if we if we don't close it, we don't continue it. What are our options? Do you know? I was going to suggest continuing it because um, one thing Mia told me is you know we could hire a wetland scientist to come in and just double check that delineation because I would like to just make sure that okay. that line is where it is because I'm concerned about you know the integrity of that basin okay. being right up against the wetland right. like right. that. So so would continuing the hearing work for you? That's fine. Yeah. If you want to do a site walk, you. Happy to, to yep. coordinate with that, you guys, and whatever you like. Uh, but I, we're in favor of, of continuing the hearing to the next meeting. Get to let all the information kind of get out uh, in case we have to come back and, and change some. Would it be the next meeting here for us in two weeks? Yeah. Probably, that's that's probably not. Because you, you still got yeah, that's pretty quick. So planning board it is a lot. Uh, I forget the meeting schedule, so it's not Monday because it's July. And it's it's all Monday. The next meeting. I'm sorry. He's on the next meeting. So, so it, it, we, we, we can put him on the next agenda and if he's, if he's not ready to yeah, meet, just, just move it. Great, yeah. we could do that. All right. Okay. And we could take time if we want. We could still take time, as you mentioned, Nick, to yeah. hire so, our own yeah. wetland scientists, which I would that's suggestion right. and support if anyone on the commission wants a site recheck. Yeah. I think we should support that. Okay. And hopefully, we have that in our budget. Absolutely. And, and, and even not I do have some budget. So. <laughs> and if I can, not to, to uh, interrupt that, but I would suggest walking it first. Um, I know sometimes some wetlands, topography-wise, are pretty obvious. I think a lot of that is we're kind of bottom of slope a lot. This does creep up the slope a little bit. So I would suggest before you spend some of your budget, take a walk. Let us know. We're happy to go out there with and take a walk. Uh, yeah. Something that seems you know kooky. You know, by, by all means, um, spend the money for an outside review. But um, I think some of it. It's going to be pretty obvious in the the areas I'm most concerned. Mm -hmm. Maybe here, it may vary a foot or two one way or the other, but we're not even near the buffer zone there. So well, when, when, I don't when want you to spend your money. When was one that I needed? You know, um, this spring. I don't know offhand. I think okay. it was in the past year. I don't know. When okay. Do you have any idea if it, it was uh, delineated using plants, plant types, and more soils, plants, and soil. both? Okay. Okay. So again, we'd, like know, know, we'd like to know what, what that date was. Yeah, yeah, if you can let us know yeah. when, when, when the wetlands were delineated, that would be good. Sure, yeah. And, 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 how, and, and, how, and what criteria would they, did they use? That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wouldn't assume it'd be obvious for us. You know the way out of the land. We'd be half lost at that stone. The way it is right now. It's pretty pretty yeah. 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 Uh, We'd be happy to okay. you know, set something up and go out there with. with one or all of you, or multiple yeah. site visits. Yeah, range of site visits. Uh, if you could work with him, absolutely. To try, try to try to yeah, do a, 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 a uh, survey, uh, not survey monkey, but a, a calendar thing. <laughs> or or <laughs> schedule right, right now. Or so. schedule right now. We, we, yeah. I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather just. Yeah, just have to have to do it. Do it. I can work on it. Yeah, I mean, it, even if it's just me, I'll try and schedule just so as many people can come out yeah. as possible, yeah. even multiple, yeah. if that's the case. But all right. I mean, I definitely like to get out there. All right, so I'll go ahead and withdraw my previous comment and not close the hearing. <laughs> we'll continue it until the uh, next available, next before we do. Well, guys, we'll put it on the next agenda, and if it's not appropriate at, the time, at, at that time, then we'll just continue it again.
Yeah, we do. Don't we have the motion to continue? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Thank you. And so, uh, yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll entertain a motion to, to continue the hearing. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Liz. Second. I'll second the bridge. Thank you. All right. Okay. Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. And Chuck. And I vote right. So we'll continue right. the hearing until at least next time. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Thank, thank you. Much for thank you. Time. Appreciate your time. And thank you all for coming in and taking yeah, your time. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's very important that people come in to us. Sometimes nothing we can do to help you, but it's important to, to, to make your voice known, so we really appreciate it. Yeah. We will get out and take another a, a look at it more in depth ourselves. Yeah, it really needs to, especially in the springtime, it's worse than it's not. Yeah, you know, oh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, we get that. Yeah. I mean, we get the runoff that gets through this field and down, like you said, we get ice flows down around the corner, mm. down the street. It's, you know, it's Okay. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you coming down. Thank you. Beautiful barn. Oh, nice. I've taken pictures of that barn in the afternoon with the sun really? shining against the side. Pretty nice. Yeah. Well, so, when, who, who does handle the road drainage? Not that I have pursued that. That road that would probably be my guess, yeah. Is that you? DPW. No, you said it's my guess. My guess. No, not me. No, no. Okay, DPW. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to do it probably the end of this week, early next week, but I'll be in touch with them and just see whenever they're available. And I'll be sure to reach out. All right. All right, good. All right, thank you. All right, moving on to continuing hearings. It's kind of loud out there. Let me see if I can have them move on. Hold on. Oh, it's the. Uh, about her. Excuse me, very Kind of loud yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Hi. I'm not a ghost. Oh, okay. <laughs> are, you, are you Steve? Yes, I am. Oh, good to see you, Steve. Good to meet you, too. Thank you, thank you. All right, never this chart to Larry. Let's go. All right. So moving, sorry, moving on to continuing hearing. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, uh, the Lumberston Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the installation of a floating dock and associated supports. Address 27 Elm Street, map and parcels 121-5, DP file number 199-1157. Does somebody here to represent that project? Yes. Yes, please. Introduce yourself. Uh, Stephen Trench, Lumberton Park Project Manager. Oh, thank you. 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 Thank that's the photo of the uh, original dock that was there 36 years ago. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, right. yeah. that's when we first moved in. Um, I do the bottom left there. That, that little thing right there. That, that's behind the rowboat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I don't know. Are these going to be useful up here? Uh, no, no. I have another uh, copy. No, I believe they're the same as your plans there. Yes, they are. Yeah, I can share these around. You, you, the can, table. you can sit. If, 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 if TV can't say, you, you, you can just sit over there. And, you can, you can pass things around as you see fit. Oh. Hold it up to the TV camera. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Though. Having them hold up little maps, Robert, wouldn't do you any good, would it? I can zoom in. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, this photo. Yes. Mr. Trench, uh, actually, when, when, when you do hold up the map, would you, uh, you, if you hold it up for him, he can zoom in. Just hold it up for a couple of seconds, he can zoom in. Sure. So this this one shows the uh, shows the property. These are our neighbors on either side. This is Rockwell Pond right here. Um, this is our house, our garage, and down here is the, it's a five foot by um, 12 foot proposed dock. Um, this is a side view of what the dock would look like installed. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this, this is the water line right here. This is the, uh, the bottom of the pond as it approaches our property here. Uh, and this is a six foot ramp that's um, for access. And again, this is like some of the construction. So, so there was a dock then when you bought the house? When we bought the house, yes, I'd say 36 plus years ago, um, there was a dock there. Um, it's in a somewhat different location. Okay. The reason being is that there's uh, trees that have since fallen 
into the pond. Um, you know, it's it, it's not a big deal to me. You know, it's nice to see the uh, the turtles out there on the logs, sunning um, during the summer months. Um, and there is other vegetation over in that area. Where I'm proposing to put it in is um, a little bit further east on the property. And there's just very little vegetation there. Okay. And it's, it's pretty much open. It's like where I, I would normally launch my rowboat and put it, okay. pull it back in to go fishing. So the opening of the vegetation, is that where the pallets were land? Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That just makes it easier to get in and out with the canoe and the, mm -hmm. the right. rowboat. Okay. Um, so these are these are the drawings. Oh, the copies of the drawings. Mr. Sam, pass it around. Is the uh, dock that's down in the yard the one that's going in? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, just some background on that. My son built that for me as a surprise. Very nice. <laughs> um, so the dock itself is built. Um, the ramp is not. The ramp is not built yet, um, and that's. My proposal there is about a four by six foot. How long is it from the shore? The, out? Um, it's pretty much right up against the shore. It might be um, a little bit of wet water. I mean, if you put it in right now, you could step up on the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you put it down there, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Over there. So what, uh, is that, uh, are there other details of, of, of your plans you want to on the property? Um, I think that shows the some, some of the stuff that we've done is, is uh, we did put a, an ad in the um, Sentinel Enterprise um, and notification. This is a copy of it. Um, Austin Ryan owns the house on one side and um, Mark Harriman owns the house on the other side. Um, and these are copies of the letters. I don't know if you want me to. Yeah, but they, if, they're, if they're on our file, they, 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 they go to, to next. Okay, one. sure. And that's oh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, these are the receipts from those letters. Yep. Yeah, that, 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 that all goes to Nick. Yep. Oh. I Perfect. believe I have, I know I have this, at least. I believe I have all that. But I'm but perfectly fine. You might want to take them and kind of recycle whatever, whatever you got, yeah. Perfectly fine with this. Um, I don't know if there's anything else in here that's. And the dock itself is going to be how long? It's Good 12 feet long, oh, five long. feet wide. Okay, all right. And <clears throat> so floating dock. So as you may have heard, I, I, I was on the family conservation for yes. years. And so the floating docks on there all the time go up and down with the tide. Why a floating dock here? Is it to go up and down with just with the pond going up and down with, with seasonal water levels? Yeah, there is seasonal water levels there. Probably by mid-August, it's going to be down, right. you know, half a foot or so yeah. at least. You did really half a foot, yeah? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we've, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen it. That's why a six-foot ramp would probably be the best bet. Okay. Um, and torrential downpours, if we get a 100-year storm or something, <laughs> that um, that water level can go up as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so you say so your, I can tell you, so this, 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 I used to, we used to get dock permits in front of us in Fowler all the time, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. Of course. We don't get many up here. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I think this is the first one I've been like, I've only been like Hong Kong for a couple of years now, but this, this is the first, I'm, first one that I recall coming in front of us. So uh, in Falmouth, we'd worry about, about the docks being too shallow and the, and the power boats coming in and just <coughs> ripping up the bottom of the pond. Oh, of course. So you're, you're, you're just going to be using a, a non-powered rowboat? Uh, worst case scenario would be an electric trolling motor if I get the, 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 uh, the John boat uh, registered. But okay. no, it would not be a gas powered. And so honestly, trolling motor is electric? Electric, okay. yes. All right. All right. Um, there, are any, there are any other docks in the pond, are there? Uh, not anymore. No, I think there were a couple before, but uh, you know, if you make them out of the wrong kind of materials, they don't last long. Right. Right. <laughs> they just become part of the bottom. Yeah. Is there anything? Probably not. <coughs> you know, the bylaw. But there, there, there's there's nothing. Uh, could could we put something in these conditions that 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 would would preclude the use of gas powered motors? So, you know, no. You know, we could. No, that would be the, the pond. Yeah, I've never seen gas-powered motors. I'm just, thinking, I'm just thinking potential. Yeah, that's it's all. pretty shallow. <coughs> I mean, a good part of it is really shallow. Right. And that's one of the reasons we have a lead problem. 
<laughs> if we thought the boats could damage the resource, then we could potentially do something with that. Yeah. But I'm not sure that we I see that any impact. In somewhere else, because <coughs> I mean, nobody's ever had a powered uh, yeah. vehicle in that pond. Yeah, it's really not big enough. No, no I'm, you, you never know what people might do. I know. No, but I'm thinking like standard, like Massachusetts Waterway. You know, something. I, I think it covers it. But Right. Yeah. Obviously, if you saw one, I think you could call. Well, you either could or couldn't, whether you had a doctor or not. We right. see them water skiing out there. That's a long gone. That, that, that part's over <laughs> Jet boats, you're right. Jet boat, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Um, are, you, are you all set? Do you have anything else? I think so, and, unless there's anything else that you need to see. Um, I This is my first time at it. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. All right. Oh, good try. Um, I don't have any questions. Anybody in the commission have any, any, any questions for them? Oh, yes, sir. I'll comment, having Please. gone by there with, Nick and with Mike and saw the backyard, saw the, the spot, I had no issue whatsoever you put it in your dock. And I would suggest that we go and approve that so that you can do what you bought your property to do with it. <laughs> There's a you know, three feet, five feet wide, which is a little swap with the, the mm -hmm. plants cut out. Um, it'll have good good luck having to keep them cut out of there. Yeah, yeah it's just growing in. There's plenty of plants growing in around there, and you know, there's plenty of spot else for the wildlife, and so on. Uh, you have the right to have access to your water. Mm -hmm. So good luck. Right. So, yeah, that's my take on it. Okay, no, appreciate that. Thank you, Rich. Anybody else? Think Harbor Master. No, yeah. Go your way. Anybody else? No. No. Okay. All right, with that, I'll, I'll open it to the public. Anybody in the, in the room have any comments or questions? If so, please feel free Please feel free to do so now, but state your name and, and uh, address first. Nobody? Okay. All right, with that, I'll, I'll then uh, I'll, I'll close the hearing, and I'll turn it over to the, to the conservation agent I, for your recommendations. Yeah, I would recommend that the uh, commission approves the motion. Well, one other question, though. Oh. Yes, um, did DEP have anything else to say? They were... No, she said that there was some, she there was something about a right of way, but I think there was some confusion there because it's not a public there's yeah. no public access back right. there. And, yeah. yeah. And yeah, as far as that there's no nothing that they have to say about it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. Right. It's okay. So I'll I'll, I'll entertain a motion. Um, I'll make that motion. Good. So it's okay. Approve that. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank, we'll you. It. thank you, Mike. All right. Ken? Aye. Uh, no, he, he, he can't, can't because he can't continue. continue. Right. He's, he's abstaining. All right. Uh, Rich? Aye. And Chuck? I would aye. Jordan Holt. So, uh, this motion passes with four yeses and one abstaining. So, enjoy your doc, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Trench. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Catch and release. Catch and release. Perhaps. Yeah, if you have any. 99% of the time, at least. <laughs> if you have any questions going forward, feel free to reach out to Nick. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. No. Cool. All, right. All right. Thank you. All right. Pursuant to Master General Law, uh, again, and I'll continue hearing. Pursuant to Master General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts Wellness Protection Act, along with the Conservation Commission, will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent regarding the construction of a garage with paved driveway, chicken coop, and associated site work. Address 689 Wachusa Street, map and parcel 358 1K. Is that correct? That's an odd number. DP file number 199-1158. Looks like Anthony, looks like you're here for this one now. Yes. Uh, Anthony, please, Katie Ward. So I'm eight and a half by 11, so do you want me to, to sit? Or how would you like to? Yeah, you feel free to sit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, point of clarification, I believe technically this is not a continued hearing. Although it was on the Correct. agenda last mm. time. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it is not a continued hearing. Right, right. right. So I, believe so I believe all members can participate. Thank Anthony, you. I have a question for you before we get started. As I explained to your compatriot two weeks ago, what was his name? I forget. Wes. Wes, West, thank West. you. Um, well, we, if, 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 if this is the same plan that was denied earlier, uh, we, we can't open it. Because you, you, we, we denied we denied that plan, and you came to come back to us looking for a different vote. So there needs to be some changes to that original that plan that was denied. 
Is yeah, that the case? I believe that, yes, I believe okay. the, I believe the chicken coop um, was one of the things, the major things that kind of changed, and, and some of the information you have here tonight is specific to that. Um, but since we have a, a new filing and a new number, I guess kind of start over, even though this is by far um, new for most of you. Um, is, is this still what we had voted on, though? Is this the plan that we had voted on, but it's then that vote didn't end up counting? It's got a different number. It's a new file. It's a new file number. But it's the same project. Is that correct? Parts of it are. Same, same project, okay. right? I think it's like which are different from yeah. what we're voting so, on that either. Yeah. So, um, so again, Anthony Cleese, um, Haley Ward, Barry Crow, um, applicant uh, here as well, 689 Wachusett Street. Proposal is for um, a garage, uh, as you saw uh, before. Uh, the garage is off to the right hand side of your plan. Uh, Propose a new, new garage and a driveway associated with that in the buffer zone. And what has kind of come up in the previous filing is the existence of an existing shed and chicken coop. So we've included that um, in the notice of intent as an after the fact filing to make that part of this filing as well. Not an existing condition, but making it part of this filing uh, to, to accommodate that uh, infrastructure uh, as well. What we're proposing, again, this is for I understand some of the discussions that have taken place on the site walks. Um, the biggest changes were to the, the chicken coop. So the chicken coop existing is about 623 square feet, which is still on the plan. Um, proposing to move that chicken coop uh, further away from the wetlands in between two trees that are shown in there. Trees are to remain, not to, to be removed. And it's about a 290 square foot uh, coop instead. So um, about half the size of the existing one. And then the other the pictures you have behind the plan um, is kind of what the chicken coop would be looking like, the portions of it. Um, you know, you have a um, small building attached to it, a fully enclosure, um, screened enclosure for the chickens. The difference between this and what was proposed is the roof. That's the next page. This, this the first one shows it's basically an open air roof. Uh, but again, hearing the concerns of the commission um, about stormwater getting into that area, right now it's not enclosed or covered at all proposing a, a metal roof um, on top of this structure to protect it um, from stormwater falling directly uh, into that. Um, and so those, uh, that's really the bulk of the changes um, is in regards to, to the chicken coop. Um, um, what thing was, was discussed uh, last time? And Mr. Probably correct me if I'm wrong, if I missed anything, um, but I, I believe that was kind of there is one other thing that was brought up until last meeting. Was, Please uh, introduce yourself. Pete. Um, my name is Tom Sesson. I'm actually the general contractor. I <coughs> know we'll be helping Barry with the project if we're able to do it. Uh, we talked. So we, we actually know who you are. We just because you're speaking, we need to know who you are. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a 16 or an 18 inch overhang just to shed the water further away from the coop, mm -hmm. and, and we were willing to do that as well. Okay. Uh, I think that, that pretty much covers, uh, covers the project. Okay. Uh, so, so, so if this is if this is a new hearing, then it's a new file number. New file number. So, so, so can 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 participate in, in, in vote in this. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any questions. I, mean, I, I I'm familiar with the project. I was, I was out there. I, I met your folks. I was out there. Um, so I, I don't have I don't have any questions at this point. Uh, uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments, particularly Ken? Yeah, that's kind of new to you. How close to the wetland is the chicken coop? I mean, the existing chicken coop. The picture I took of it uh, in June, that's the fence I have up now. Yep. And it's, this is, you know, woods here. And the wetland is over here near these trees. The existing chicken coop will go five feet off of the closest wetland flag. Yeah, we're going to move it about 30 feet. And so it's going to be about 25 feet or so off. So it's moving about 20 feet further back. Mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. uh, inside of it. It's pretty dry. I mean, it's dry as the Mojave Desert right now. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't played minutes. I think believe one of the other comments that came up uh, previously, um, again, the existing coop being so coastal that ones, but also elevation wise, how mm -hmm. where the existing coop is seen to be very near that of the elevation of the wetlands. So moving it um, further away um, actually raises the coop up about three feet higher than where it is currently. So gets um, not only getting horizontal separation, it's also getting more vertical separation <coughs> as you see it today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Karen, do you have any more questions or comments? No, I'm good. You're all set? Thank you. Okay. Rich, I've got Please. some comments to make. In fact, uh, my first one addresses Ken's question about the um, boundary of the wetland. Um, based on my own person, I'm not a wetlands uh, a certified delineator, but on my own inspection, Mike was at both of those. One in February was flowing water going basically right around the coop. We were there in mid-June after it had been dry a few weeks, and it was mucky all the way up to the retaining wall. There's a retaining wall that blocks the water. When we were there in February, it was literally flowing water. Yep. A small yeah. stream going right around the coop and taking a left and then a right along the retaining wall. I believe that the wetland goes all the way up to the retaining wall and that it has not been properly delineated. And if before we were to possibly approve this, I would think we might want to consider having a commission having their own opinion. Of course, it's dry as the Mojave Desert right now, <laughs> Mr. Perla said. Yeah, but it was pretty mucky when we were there just a week and a half ago. Yeah, well, you know that you don't need water line. to delineate a wetland, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are other ways to delineate right. it, yeah. so we can still do well, right. delineation at this point. In time. But the the fact that there was flowing water showed me it goes right up to there. That's interesting. In February, and it was very muggy and just it's very wet. I would encourage you to look at the site. It's very yeah. wet and muggy all the way across it. Um, so the coop right now is totally exposed to the environment other than blocking predators. It's got about 30 live chickens. So it's basically 30 nonstop feces factories located within the recess area. 20. I counted 30. You know, if you so go by the Grand Approximately, not, not exactly. Don't hold me If you go 30. by Grandview, it is 60 geese sitting on the pond there doing their thing that flows into the wetlands. We don't control the geese, so but we can that control the bigger bird than a chicken. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Perlman, if, if you could let him speak, I'd appreciate it. Sir, we don't control the wildlife. What know. we can control are what is within the residents' properties and other owners within the 100-foot buffer zone and within the resource area. So it's our, it's our, we're getting loud out there. You know, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't close the door. Is this something in writing? So, I'll the Conservation Committee has in the past and recently ordered concrete blocks and other inert material to be moved out of a buffer zone. So how can we allow livestock within a wetland with flowing water? So I think if we allow the coop here, I don't see how we can basically exclude anything from a wetland or buffer zone in the future without being kind of contradictory or hypocritical in some sense. So you're that's that kind of what we're here. It, it is physically in the buffer zone? That it's in the wetland. And my contention is actually in the wetland. At minimum, it's within the buffer zone, and we should not allow the, the, a chicken farm or chicken coop within a buffer zone. That's what, part of what we're trying to stop. So I would encourage our, uh, we rejected this basically same proposal two weeks ago, though it, it had a different number or something. So we ended up having to reboot on it tonight. Um, so I think we should require the chicken coop be removed from the jurisdiction, outside of our jurisdiction, which is outside the buffer zone. Um, and that any, uh, that an inspection confirms that's done before any work may begin on the garage, including any alteration of the sur earth surface or any stockpiling of supplies and so on. Um, we don't necessarily have to issue an enforcement order, there may be other options, um, but we should see that the coop is moved in out of our jurisdiction prior to approving, or to the garage being allowed to move forward. I have no objection to the garage whatsoever. It's the chicken but coop that's Should the wetland be delineated before, before we require the, the coop to be moved? We have jurisdiction within the, the buffer zone itself, which it is in, and have the right to have it removed from that. And my, my observation, uh, Mike can agree or not, it was clearly wet. Well, it's flowing water, it's wet. You don't need anything else. I don't need the certified wetlands guy to tell me that flowing water. I disagree with that. Um, just because it's flowing water doesn't mean it's a wetland. That site is all wet, sir. Also, also, just because there isn't water doesn't mean it's not a wetland. This is true. 
So I think it's, it's all been looking at my suggestion is if there's a concern with wetland delineation, walk it with the wetland scientist mm -hmm. and look at plants and, and, and soil logger and look at the soils. So wetlands are defined by hydric soil. Mm -hmm. So yes, many times when you have flowing water there continuously, you get hydric soils and that creates the wetland. Just because of you know, a couple of days you go out there, it happens to be wet. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't mean it's an obvious wetland. So if there's a concern with wetlands, I think it's worth it. If you haven't already walked it and, and confirmed well in delineation, I think yeah. you should do that. We can do that or simply use our authority that extends 100 <clears throat> feet beyond that boundary, which goes past the retaining wall. We still have that authority within the buffer zone. As I mentioned earlier, we've actually asked people to move concrete blocks and other inert material out of a buffer zone why would we allow chicken and you know chicken coop with the rain flowing in, et cetera? Mm -hmm. No control over the what happens to the waste and so on. The chicken coop contains a lot of different things in the feces um, and the urine, and then you got a lot of phosphorus, very high in phosphorus, high in nitrogen, high in you know can have pathogens in the feces and so on. It is not a proper use within that zone. I feel for Mr. Curlin, he's got a lovely property. I don't blame him for wanting to have a chicken coop and put it in that particular area, but it's not good for the neighbors downstream community. That's what we're here to protect. Excuse me if I could interrupt. Uh, go ahead. The well to make the conditions so much better. We're raising the height of the chicken coop. We're putting a roof over the chicken coop. Barry cleans that chicken coop three times a week. I mean, he totally takes care of these chickens like they're pets. I mean, we're, we're, try, we're trying to make the conditions work for everybody, and the guy just wants to keep his chickens. I mean, he can. If you guys could outside of that zone it's, it's a bad zone and i i'd like to you know echo that i do fear, feel for you barry i don't want to i'm not trying to come down on your heart but i i am confused as to why you can't move the chicken coop to across to the other side of the property where it's well outside the 100 foot bumper i know it's in lawn area right now but that seems to be i mean i would address everyone's concerns on the commission as far as i know a beautiful coop all right it'd be a it, it wouldn't be unattractive. <laughs> no. it, would, it would not be unattractive at all. Yeah, it's closer to the garden and put the, the waste. Yes. Yeah. I know it's where it is now. It's kind of down lower. It's, it's hidden. Low. I know that's part of the benefit. It's shady. That, it's. But it's, you get a roof on it. It is. It, yeah, as far as you know, I've heard from a lot of the commission, and my, me personally, I feel like it's it's just way too close to the wetland to say that it's okay like I just don't it doesn't seem okay to me or how close it is I'm not a voting member but just that's my contention right now and I feel like that would solve everyone's concerns here is that we just moved it yeah. to outside I, I didn't know what you were talking about but this is the buffer zone oh uh, so what you're saying is you'd rather it somewhere on this side of your property mm -hmm. outside so that's of my right. house yeah right that's your well, garden is your septic okay. system I think in the front so looking out your front door off to the right. I guess my point too Somewhere is the, the feces, uh, nothing's really escaping. It's being cleaned up and removed. Don't, don't accept that, sir. It rains out of the wind of those into the percolates into the soil. You know, what, the concern that we that I had. How about a few to pour a concrete slab? Yeah. I'm not confident. If you were to conceive, I'm sorry. Mike might, might, might have a different answer. But. Well, I mean, I will say Mr. Perla is very immaculate. I mean, the, the property is beautiful, it's well maintained, it's very, very clean. But, you know, what has bothered me since day one is right downstream is the Sportsman's Club on. They have fishing derbies and they have kids. Further downstream goes into the Wachusa Reservoir, which is a state no, I, 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 I mean, if we, you know, yeah. that pond doesn't need any more nutrient loading because it's yeah. already in, in the final stages you of know, nutrification. And, and I, I, feel, I, I feel horrible too because everybody should be able to do what they want on their property, but if it doesn't affect the resource. But if we, we've got another, uh, another project that has existing farmland from Barts and there's an old asparagus field that was on right on the uh, right on a water resource. If we say yes to this, what's to stop one of the bigger developers to say, "Hey, I want to put cattle out there." Yeah. How do we yeah. How do we say no? How do we say no? We can't. And then, yeah, it makes us kind of. Um, uh, but, the, the, but the other thing is, there was there was no plant material around the, the coop. Mm -hmm. That leads me to believe that it's 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 full of nitrogen and nothing can grow there at this point because 
it's it's not whether it, it's cleaned up every day or it isn't. It still escapes. I mean, there are animals that still escapes, and there's a lot of them there. It's, it also was installed without going through this process back time, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Which is why it's been included so, as part of the filing to, yeah. to make it part of the record right. and right. part of this, this discussion. And, so you, 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 you've heard our concerns. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Do you want us to take a vote tonight, or do you want to continue it and come back to us? Do you, do you want to? So can I confirm? You, you may indeed. Yeah, so yeah. Can we take a, a two-minute recess? You yes. may. Yeah, yeah. So that, okay. Could I mention something? Yes. Can I just break? So you may. I think the best situation for us now is to continue it for you guys to come back next week with a proposal to move the chicken coop across outside of the 100 foot buffer and we can you know continue this meet on it on the next week and then i am almost certain that it would get approved and if i can't say how people would vote no, yeah. but you know that would make it a lot more uh convincing appreciate it if, but if you if you want your minutes go for it if you don't mind no, right. just not overall we're all yeah. here right just, just make sure that they, you know, if we do not continue it or however that works, mm -hmm. that we don't end up voting on this exact same thing. Is, 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 is it either rejected or is the shed, is the shed associated with the coop or is that just where you happen to have a shed? Well, the chickens live in the in the shed. <laughs> yeah, that's, you can call oh, them, I, yeah. oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's a garden shed it's, with. With the combinations for the chicken, the roosting areas for the chickens. Okay. Oh, they do. So the shed, the shed, yeah, there's, there's the a shed, door. So the shed would, oh. would have to go with the coop. If if you have, if you well, would go no, with. No, 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 I mean, I think the shed, if, if he <laughs> discontinued its use as a coop, as a roosting area for the chickens, and used it as a, as a garden shed, I, I don't see how that. But but if, if, but if if we were to move it outside the resource area. Outside the buffer zone, he had to build another shed to go with the coop. That was, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's kind of what I was getting yeah. okay. uh, well, yeah. I don't think he's going to be able to move out of the place where he is. Well, this, this drawing is it's a drawing of somebody else's shed, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sample of what he would do. I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, we're having a nice concert here. Right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> it is interesting. Very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Is this the Lemister Symphony? Oh. Okay. LSO. So, thank you for the old harmonic. <laughs> Okay. Good thing about it. It's very dramatic. And <laughs> great, great view. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got you got epic show. music and chicken coop coop. Yeah. You want know, this coop on the coop coop? This is high drama. We're flying. Free the day. I want to see any chicken coops on the Whitney carriage. Yeah. Well, just give me ideas. <laughs> The price of food, the price of eggs. <laughs> yeah, I know, kid. You're gonna see more of these problems. I'm thinking, I mean, I mean what chicken coops to get eggs with the I price of so. eggs and bread and everything else? <laughs> we'll have to have a coop council. <laughs> we know we're a, huh? a few cows. A few cows for the milk and stuff. Yeah. I guess the advantage of doing what you were suggesting is to just not have to get another number from DEP. Just to make it go, it just go that's past. the easiest I see it going for the I yeah. want to do whatever makes it easier. I as do long too. As it moves. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that's, that's what we I do. think we're all, yeah, we're all, no one wants to be giving anyone a hard time. Jones agree. Just move it out of the buffer zone. Right. Then we're good. Right. Okay. Yeah, the, when okay. I was out there, the only thing I mentioned was that they, they had to take out three, four, five trees. I said, just, we're looking for like maybe a one-to-one -one replacement with some like wetland-friendly trees, like a red maple. They do take some trees out to build a garage. Oh, okay. I see what you said. Yeah. Now, the other thing, I'll mention this again. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I, that would, I like, if, we, if that does happen, Bob, we'll talk about that later. No, we'll that. The, another thing that was suggested to me on this case is we could split it into two separate NOIs. So take the chicken coop off of this one and just say, you know, you're gonna have to come back with a plan for this chicken coop, but that will allow him to, we can vote on the NOI for the garage, and then let you go over all that. Vice versa order. Okay. Coop right. first before right. garage. Right. That, that was just something that suggested to help of, it go along yeah. faster. The problem is with, with two NOIs, that, that's two filing fees for me then. And that's the that's yeah. why so the I, better thing. I think we prefer that modification. I think I'd rather have just go have one fee. I don't so want we really don't want to go the enforcement order route right if we don't have to. I, no, 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 I don't want to either. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's see. Uh, 
and it's going to restore itself. Huh? It's going to restore itself. Yeah. Everything, whatever's there, is just going to go right back. Okay. Yeah, cool. so that, uh, yeah, just not having chicken. Leave it alone, man. Yeah, don't want to make it any work. And there, they had mentioned before they were we said no, no, you know, the coop business could be my peak. That's their prerogative. And they can do their free yeah. do Who knows what the government will do? It'll take longer yeah. for them. Yeah. This, this is the easy part. Yeah. Welcome it's back. My wife Thank you very much. Uh, Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes, uh, okay. check yeah. Right yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, again, I think it's we're all hearing everyone very loud and clear. Um, and thank you for all the input again. Um, so what we'd like to do is, if we can continue with the next meeting, mm -hmm. um, going to take um, another look at moving the chicken coop on the other side of the property, kind of where you guys are looking to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, at first, we're thinking maybe just try and condition it, but I think that we, in, in everyone's best interest, if we show a new location on the plan, Absolutely. Yeah, that we can all say, yeah, that Perfect. makes sense. Sure. Yeah, um, so if Thank we you. can do that, um, we'd like to ask for a continuance so that we can. Uh, uh, look at a better location that is more amenable to the commission. So that I, I think that's a fantastic Thank you. idea. Thank great. you. Um, Thank okay. you. I appreciate the comments. So, so, all set? Uh, okay. Yeah, I think okay. that's okay. the right. So, with, the, with that, I'll take a motion to continue the hearing. Oh, sir. I'll make that motion, though. Continue the hearing. Yeah, let me finish. <laughs> so, Cut it close. You're ready. Right. <laughs> so, I have a second. We're in the next meeting. Can I have a Second? Okay. Yes. Ten seconds. Uh, Liz, Richie? Vote aye. Uh, Mike Tiki, votes aye. Chuck Rama? I vote aye. So that's uh, five zero to continue the hearing until at least next time. What, 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 do we have a calendar? What is the next? I don't know what the holiday is. It? It's, it's July the twelfth. It's July twelfth. But is, if there's a holiday, no, no, well, the no, holidays. You guys so. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Planning board that um, gets kooky with. Uh, so the, 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 right the, yeah, the first one. Is that so the next one? July twelfth. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Put it on there. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, continue to July twelfth. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Appreciate you talking. Appreciate you coming. Thank you. All right. All right. Moving on. Uh, new business. Uh, new commission vacancy. What do you have for today? So I was get, able to get in touch with Ken here. Obviously, Ken is here. Our other welcome. Friend. Yes. Yay for Ken. Thank By you. the way, later on, I want you to tell us about yourself. But the, oh yeah, we got to. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. You guys still need to get introduced here, but um. Our other commissioner who was MIA was Amanda Lansing. I was able to get in touch with her. She is um, resigning from the commission officially due to personal issues. Um, so we have an opening. I told the mayor's office, so they're aware. So he's put feelers out for anyone that might be interested. But if any of you guys know anybody, that I fully encourage you to you know bring their names to me and I'll put them over to the mayor and see what he says. Okay. All right, uh, along with that, uh, as far as I know, I'm the I'm still the interim chair. Um, if oh, you guys are willing, I I oh maybe be something other than interim to actual chair. Maybe right. we make a motion to do that. Okay, yeah. thank Since you. Is, is, that, is that how we do it? Uh, I'd have to look into that. Yeah, we can yeah. do that yeah. next time. Check, right? check with the city clerk and see how sure. we go about doing that. Just to make you from interim chair to right. permanent chair. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be. There is no other way. I mean, we yeah. could do. I don't know how. Official that we could do a vote now and then if it's not a real thing. I, I, don't, I, I don't think we need to take up our time doing that now. Okay. In case, in, but so yeah, so check on it and we'll we'll, we'll take care okay. of it. Okay. And then we yeah, we'll just do a quick next time. Please, yeah. please put it on agenda for next time. Yeah. All right. Vote for chair. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Old business. We have none. Certificate of compliance. Uh, Ninety six Lakeshore Drive. DEP file number one ninety nine dash eleven oh seven. Are you good here for that? No? Okay. No. So that was, uh, it's been going for a little while, right? Yeah. They've been waiting for yeah. the certificate of compliance. Uh, I drove by there the other day with Mike. Um, it was for the installation of a septic tank. Yeah. They're all finished. Um, everything looks clean, done. Okay. You know, there's no active construction, anything going on. Okay. So it looks good to me. I would recommend to approve the certificate of compliance. And I'll entertain that motion then. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a butter. Oh, you're on a butter. butter. Right. Not, uh, right. on this. Based Thank on you. Nick's suggestion, I will make that motion to Thank approve you. this certificate of compliance. Okay, second. 
Second. Oh, I heard Ken first. Ken first. So, uh, Liz Ritchie? Uh, aye. And Chuck Ryan? I go to aye. Okay. So, motion passes four uh, with one abstaining. Right. And another one for 98 Farm Hill Road, DP file number 199 1112. What do you got that one? So, 98 Farm Hill Road, it was from like back in the 90s. Oh, the shit. property was initially sold and when they had first developed it, and I guess they just never got the certificate of compliance closed out. Um, but part of the order of conditions was a, a replication because they had to construct the driveway that was going through a wetland. Yeah. Um, so they replicated an equal amount of surface area to like offset the driveway. Mm -hmm. And I was there um, last week uh, no one was on the property, but I was able to take a look around, and all the replication is, you know, it's what one that's it, it, It's had a chance to take root since then. Yeah, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's been had 20 years of, uh, <laughs> you know, generation there, so it's it's looking good. So I would uh, recommend that we move to approve for the, or grant the certificate of compliance. Um, uh, that, that, thank you, I appreciate appreciate that. Uh, and I'll, I'll take a, I'll accept a motion to accept this, to issue a certificate of compliance for 98 Farm Hill Road. I will make that motion. Thank you, Mike. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Liz? Aye. Uh, Rich? Aye. And Chuck? Aye. Vote aye. That's five ayes. Mm -hmm. And motion okay. passes. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Modifications to existing order of conditions. 122 Water Street, DP file number 199-1131. Yes. Robert Ruggles covering for Wes Flist, who is on vacation. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this is a uh, modification of the existing order of conditions. We are asking to put a sidewalk behind building. Oh, so this, this is the Whitney Carriage Department. Yes. Okay, so yeah. you're telling me about that. Okay. That could be so. Whitney Carriage Department 122. Oh, you hear something I want to talk to you about. Robert Ruggles. Um, so we're and I'm sorry, your your relation so to the to the architect here. and owner's representative. Yeah. Thank you. The whole back for very good right. investments. And and the the okay. So, for sure. so um, we are moving along and making good progress on our parking lot projects that you heard last year. Mm -hmm. And um, in in doing so, we found the need to provide a means of egress through the second exit to the back exit of Building Six B. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really not apparent to us until we locked everybody out of their front door that they needed to use the back door. And there are tree roots, and uh, it's it's just not a very uh, safe um, means to egress. Uh, the building mm -hmm. if you needed to so we're asking for a sidewalk it is in the uh it is in the buffer zone mm -hmm. as almost everything is this you know property is oxbow by the south brook and what we intend to do is offset the impervious area by taking out some of the old tennis court Oh, oh, that, oh, that, that's a complication, okay. It, it's still there. <laughs> we chew a little bit of it off. Um, it has better proximity to the brook mm -hmm. than, uh, than the sidewalk does. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it would be an exact area uh, trade. So you would you literally just take the tennis court right out? No. Oh. We take off the exact area of the five-foot walkway. Okay. What would, would that leave you an unusable tennis court, though? No. We still, you know, have nice... Uh, basketball hoops you know we'll have to move one of the new hoops okay. back a little bit it's about 11 foot or something okay. like that but uh you know it's really the three-point shot is what the kids want you know Christian? Yeah. And, and and you know kind of the battle under the net and the three-point shot is what they want so, so it ends up being a smaller yeah, court the but the, the tenants who play the there are, are small people so <laughs> it works out really well the net too. yes <laughs> we lower the net too. So question. Well, they're looking, um, so you're taking over the land that was in, was pervious and making it impervious, and then switching another area that was impervious into pervious. That was impervious into pervious. Correct. So there's a tennis court um, is, is, across the bridge. Is, is the hundred foot buffer on this map? Do you know? Uh, can I see? You can actually make it's in the building. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, from, it's 200 feet from the front. Um, so this is the sidewalk in question, right? This is floodplain right here. And right. this is the 200-foot, 100-foot. 
Oh, oh then this is 200 foot. foot. This is floodplain. Yeah. Our dark line is floodplain. Yeah. 500 year flood right. hazard, I yeah, guess. Right. I, I've never even really seen that one before. It's this one that we so usually look at. And this is 100 foot offset right here. Okay. And this is 200 foot offset. Yeah. So, right here. Yeah, this is the brook. Right here. Yeah, exactly. It's way through the brook. Where would you want to? 100 foot is right here. Okay. 200 foot is here. 100 foot flood hazard. 500 foot flood hazard. 100 year flood hazard. It says 500 on there. No, you said, you said foot. Oh. It's year. So I just. Year. Right. That's Sorry. Yeah. Right. Okay. The 500 foot flood? Is that what it is? 500 foot big flood. Yeah. yeah. So, 100 100 years 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 yep. so they're not. They're not used as tennis courts anymore. It's just basketball courts, repurposed. Right. right, so that's okay. why you can take off some of it. Got it. Okay. I'm saying, how are you going to take off the tennis court? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's why well, half the court. No, if, it, if, it's a, if it's a safety issue, uh, you know, egress. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to take a look at this? Okay. But, uh, did, did, did the, I don't have any questions. Did, did the commission have any questions or comments? No, it seems simple. Okay. Anybody in the audience here for that? No? Okay. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and, uh, and, and close the hearing then. Um, Nick, what would you give any recommendation? Actually, yeah, who will close this one? Do you yeah. any recommendation? Uh, well, I will say, um, I guess, a comment. Uh, Bob did take uh, Mike and I around the property, and we had a look around, and it's a beautiful place. I like what he's doing with the, with the area. I think it's good for the city, and, you know, trying to be very he's being very communicative with me since i started and um with all that i would recommend to uh approve the motion okay or make a motion to approve okay then i'll i'll, I'll ask for motion to 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 approve the the um the project for 122 water street i will make that motion thank you mike we have a second i'll second that thank you rich ken aye liz aye Chuck? Hi. All right. Motion passes 5-0. Yeah. And nice. Nick, Nick, you, you name, your name is Bob? Robert Bob. Yeah. Robert. Thank you. Are you you go by Robert? It's Bob. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, guys, you mentioned the, the tree cutting to him. Yes. Yeah. I, I called you about the yeah. tree cutting. Yeah. I am, the bridge. in addition to my duties here, I am also a volunteer a water quality sample for the National River Watershed Association. Okay. And new this year, my site is Manuslick Brook. Oh, at the, at the intersection of Water and Mechanic Street. Okay. Okay. Water and, no, sorry, Wadi's Water Street and, and Whitney. That used to be my site. Yeah. Oh, oh was it really? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I, anyway, long, longer conversation. So, yeah. when, I, when, I, when I was the, the volunteer coordinator for the Watershed Association said, uh, said I had the site, she said, oh, yeah, by the way, Mr. Chairman, take a look at the, at the cutting they did by the river. Um, and I was down there and I was kind of shocked and I looked at some aerial photographs that were taken before that and it was it was covered in trees and now it's it's all stumps all along the riverbank there yeah. and I was curious how that happened and what can we do to well uh, a lot of the trees so we've gone through several different border conditions right so, so, yeah. several different NOIs yeah there, there was yeah. Uh, there was one before us early last year for some time we taking out some 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 sidewalks or parking lots and which was great. I don't recall anything in part of the, at least the NOI well, that's in front of me. Let me help you recall across because the street. One of the bigger ones was the taking care of the dam and mm -hmm. abutments. Do you recall that? And we spoke specifically about the trees. We hired a dam uh, consultant and presented a uh, what was survey. That? I don't recall that. I don't know. Was it, was it a Zoom meeting that we had? I remember. Or? So what we had was trees growing into the granite dam and the tree guy said any trees within 20 foot of the abutment mm. the uh the foundations of the dam have to go okay so that was a that was a hefty that was a haircut for the for the property i mean uh but we had trees growing out of the dam you know my concern as an architect is that the building the dam itself is integral to building five mm -hmm. <laughs> which is an occupied building it has had three different hydroelectric generators there. The last one burned. Okay, so the the, the granite stones of the sluiceway 
aren't in the best shape, you know, and it, it's a big, difficult project. The easiest thing to do is to maintain the vegetation from growing in the that. And then we also had uh, approval to maintain in perpetuity the brook uh, so we don't have to come run to you and say there's a bike in the brook. Mm -hmm. Can we take it out, mm -hmm. you know, and then maintain the sluice way? And I think you, you know, if you go there now and take a look at how clean it is running through there. Uh, it used to be that it would overflow, stuff would come down, it would clog up in front of the sluice way, and then it would over, over it would spill over. And uh, while that looked and sounded really pretty, come August when it dries up, the silt that was in there just smelled awful. It was just horrible. So by, by doing the work that the city had done before we really became active on the property, which the city was taking a back of, and pulling that out as a hedge, a stormwater hedge, just to keep the water flowing. What we do is we go in there about three, four times a year and pull that out. So what we do is uh, maintain it as you would like it for providing good stewardship for the, uh, for the brook. Is that dam been graded? It is not a listed dam. It is not. It is not a listed dam. Uh, we would like to get to the point to where we could take off the top stones and actually, you know, V, uh, be it down in the center so that we don't rely on the sluice way. Mm -hmm. uh, that one may come to you maybe next year when we're not done, when we're not busy with the parking lot project. What side of, I'm, I'm, new to the, I'm new to the site, so I've only been there twice so far this year, but where uh, in relation to Water, Water Street comes down. Yeah, much to Water Street. Yeah. What side of Water Street is the dam? Right, coming down. Towards, it's towards the buildings or the other side? Low side. Low so, side. So towards towards the buildings. Yep. Towards the buildings. So the area that I was taking samples, there's no dam there. No. It's on the other side. It's on the other side of the street. By, uh, the south parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, between the parking lots. Yeah. Well, we we got um, order conditions. Uh, you know, we had approval to go in and to clean all that out and to keep that because uh, there's a bunch of dead and um, and I don't know I have to go back into the, the meeting I mean this was maybe a couple of years ago that I did this weren't, weren't you here with that? yes uh, <laughs> I, I mean I remember the she meeting. was the only one yeah. I remember you cleaned yeah. a lot out right um, I can't remember the part about the trees so the, the, the problem that we have there also is the methadone clinic is our south neighbor Okay, and the problem we had is people are using in that lot, and they're hiding in the uh, they're hiding in the woods. So you know, with it open and clear like this, it helps us keep security on our on our property. Under, understood, and, I, and I, I, I appreciate that situation. But again, us as a conservation commission, streams and, and, and brooks and, and wetlands are our jurisdiction. And now we've got a completely, completely denuded stream bank there. Well, that's a so, little heavy-handed to say it's it's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not. There's, there's, there's nothing there. It's a stumps. No, there. I mean, you're sounding like this is the Lorax or something like that. This is not. There are plenty of trees that are still there, and the ones that were taken out were either crowded or of a species that was not good. I'm not a tree expert, and and that were leaning. And we did it with your supervision. Who did you use to do Who made the determination that the uh, trees had to be removed? The tree expert did. In Bartlett. In Bartlett did. Yeah, he came okay. and he presented okay. to you guys. I, I was, I was Wes, Wes and Julian were here and they presented everything and we went through everything with Amanda. I'd be happy to meet you out there, Chuck. I'd be glad. I'm going out there again. The, yeah, I'd like to see it again. This, this, the I third. The third Saturday in July is next time going out. What we also have is uh, a walkway, an extension of the brook, yeah. that we have an order of conditions or a notice of intent, whatever you call it. We have permission to build a pathway. Okay. The problem is, is that there is a foundation, you know, well, our property obviously stops, right? We yeah. reach a property line, right. and that's where the clinic is, but there's a foundation. So you cannot, you cannot physically connect all the way through. It would be neat if you could, but I think the water actually goes underneath the building, maybe five properties up the Tillman and Cook, or where the flea market is, yep. you know? I'm sure I got that name wrong. You but still have elevated coliform levels of that? Yeah. You, should, you should have seen it the last week. 
and nobody's it was, ever it was, been able to address that. It was, it was, it was the highest one in, of, of all the sampling spots was the cold. Nobody thing. knows where it's coming from. Was that we died to So anyway, I would like to take you up on your on your, on your offer to, yeah. to meet you. I'll be here. back uh, the week of July 11th. Nick, you're Sorry, that's Let me, yeah, my next sampling date is the third Saturday, so come on. Come on, phone. What's the third? Oh, here we go. Thank you. July 3rd, Saturday is the 16th. That, that, that's not real. So, so if, you, if you're around 8 o'clock in the morning, morning, eight eight in the morning from, uh, uh, Chicago. I'm sorry? Here. I fly from Chicago to be here. I live in Chicago. Oh, you do? Yes. Is there somebody else I can meet with? <laughs> I don't know. What Saturday? Mean. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can get, uh, we can most likely get somebody here. Um. All right, let me, can, can, can you get him my cell phone number? Yeah. Yeah. Get in my cell phone right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll say that. Have that person get, get, get touch me because I, I, I should be there about 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday the 16th. Okay, we'll get that. And, and Ken, if you want to join us here, you're yeah. more than welcome. Anybody else you want to Let us join us, please. That'd be great. Yeah, because I'd yeah. like to go over it. And because if, if honestly, if, if that, the, the, again, my purview there was only one small area, but it was literally denuded. It was every piece of almost every piece of vegetation was taken out. There were stumps. This place. There was a lot. But, of but no, 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 I'm just telling you what I saw. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not looking for an argument here. I'm just telling you what I saw. Yeah. I, and if, if that was done under a uh, conservation commission order conditions, it there was, was a dereliction of duty there someplace. <laughs> so I like to go out there and just come to an understanding and maybe see something. Maybe still there's something we can do. So you know, Chuck. Though you know, we we follow the rules. Okay. No, and, I'm, I'm not saying we, you don't. We, but we, we tied you know, every no, tree it's, it's, off. We we left it there for months. Oh no, derelict of duty on on our part. I don't, that's what I'm saying. I think so. you know, um, is it Amanda that you know is no longer yeah. Angela? Angela. Oh, Angela. Both, both. Amanda was a commission member. Angela, 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 Angela was the agent. agent. And I know was Angela was, was very active. We had her phone. She'd come out all the time. Yeah. She was fantastic. Okay, we had a great relationship with her, but particularly with Amanda too, and the commission. Yeah. And I don't want anything to stain uh, our mm -hmm. good working relationship. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, you know, you guys want us to close out everything that we're doing. It's just that, you know, we eat in big chunks out there. You know, it's a big, you know, it's 13 and a half. 13 and a half uh, acres there, you know? Um, our, it's an historic district. It's yeah. larger than the entire uh, Lemonster historic district yeah. by itself. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot to manage, mm -hmm. and we want to do it with your, with accolades. You know, no, we don't want an A on the test. No, right? and, 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 the, and the, the, handful, the couple times that you folks have been before us, nothing but fantastic, and I've done, that this is, I'm trying not, I'm, my intent is not to besmirch your reputation with us whatsoever, but just this one small area I have an issue with. And I just want to talk to you about it. And maybe it's something I, I can see where I, I know what you're talking about, and I think you know there's more vines and more uh, undergrowth than possibly you thought. And uh, that's but possible. Now let me, let me just get in the last thought: is that the security issue is a big issue for our uh, yeah. you know being able mm -hmm. to keep the users off. There it used to be full of meals and. Yeah. Uh, Mentioned that in the dam integrity. Yeah. And the dam integrity was a was a that was a hard hit, you know. Yeah. Really, you know, kind of scout that area yeah. through there. Okay. But we're coming back with wild flowers, you know. And uh, okay. we're trying to do the right thing there. Okay. Chuck, right. it's nice to uh, see you again. I nice see you again and not have to see everybody on a Zoom call. I know, all right. <laughs> Thank you for your volunteer. Thank you, bro. I appreciate right. your time. Thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah, so there, so 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 July sixteenth. <laughs> July 16th, I'll probably get you with uh, Patrick Rosilli, who's out of Cape. What's, what's his last name? C-O-R-S-I-G-L-I-A. Don't want to wait and have to come up for that, and there's somebody local. Well, he'd like to meet with you. He was going to come tonight, but he's working at the property. Okay. It's one of the owners. And I got your, I yeah. see you each other's okay. numbers already. Yeah. So. If you could just pass my number on to him tell, and have him get in touch with me and just to verify that he's available that day, that'd be great. I will do that. Thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Thanks, right. Bob. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate your time. All right, good. So uh, next one, 96, again, uh, the, in, under the modifications of existing orders, 96 Exchange Street, DP file number 199-640. Not you? Nope. Okay. I'm 75. No, we're skipping. We're, oh, okay. He was the next one. 275 was after 122. I've got, I've got 96 Exchange Street here. 122 Water Street was Whitney Carriage. We were just talking to him. Right. right. So now it's 275 Exchange Street. 
I don't have it on here. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to send you guys. That was an improper one. That was my mistake. And this is the up-to-date one. That was a that was an earlier oh, right. draft. That was my mistake. Guys. So what's what's so it's what two, we're doing? 275. So we're yeah doing a modification for uh, 275 exchange. But you still got the same DP file number here. That should be the right file number. It's six. Four, it's six yeah, forty, right? Yeah, six, four, I had the right number. That, or that was right, an earlier right. typo. Oh, the ninety six is a typo. Yeah, just a ninety six. Yeah, that's why yeah. it's repeated. Yes. Yes. One ninety nine dash six forty. Okay, so that that's was it. it. Yep. So you are the B four yes. B D four B. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so uh, 275 exchange. 275 exchange. Rate, DP right. file number 199 640, and you are. I am Anthony Palmer, the landowner. Okay. And it's the very last house at the end of Exchange Street that Paul Colombo owned that was on this commission a couple of years back. Um, I'm just finishing completion of a house on that lot for myself. I'm just looking up the, the I'm looking up, up the site so Yep, yep. Continue on. Yep, so um, we moved in in December and now I'm finishing the landscaping and we had to adjust the grade on the property. In one area that's about 65 feet long, I'm asking for permission to move the wattles, basically 12 inches, so I can put a stone wall there and backfill with some wood. <coughs> um, Nick was already at the site last week and I got written permission to remove the silt fences and the wattles everywhere else because the land is all stabilized, there's a lawn everywhere. But I've got this one area where the lawn basically drops down like this and it's a pain in the bow. Um, yeah. There's an area that's about four feet wide that I want to basically add a foot of foam onto it and then just put some small boulders along the edge. Simple and, and easy. Erosion control. It, it basically erosion control. I'm mean, basically going to use the existing erosion control that's there, but I want to shift it 12 inches. Otherwise, I've got to cut into the existing material, which is full of a lot of stone, build a wall, and then backfill it. What, what, uh, what are our thoughts on this? Do we, do we need some kind of plan to look at to approve? What do you, what I, do have, uh, I do have an email. I mean, I should have printed this out. This is my mistake. But <laughs> I do have an email from him, um, the email requests that have some pictures in there of the site. And I've got my original plan um, that was submitted with Angela that we used for the original order <laughs> And you get that's the area in question is on. <laughs> yeah, the whole area. Yeah, 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 it's the whole the whole exact site. Yeah, basically what we had to do is because the pond was over, we had to raise the water, raise the house a little because of the water table, uh -huh. which meant the roll off from the house down was a little bit more than what we wanted. Yeah. So, no, sorry, you explain to me. I, I was, I'm sorry, I was looking up your property on the yeah, yeah, no problem. map. Um, Tell me again, well, because uh, I've I've got these images that that Nick took. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so we're looking at that I can please, out. please. And let me actually show you the bring the plan on and see what they fit. So where we're talking about is the erosion control is along here. So this one area right here, mm -hmm. it's roughly 65 feet long, and it's the back left corner of the house. Yeah. That's what we're looking at right here. So are we kind of standing at the house looking looking down? Um, from this picture here, you're standing right here looking over. Got it, okay. And from this picture here, you're actually standing right over here. Okay. So you can see how it rolls, oh, sorry, let's see how it rolls down. Yep. All I'm looking to do is basically shift over the wattles, 12 to 18 inches, put some stones along here, and then backfill with loam. I'm not going to back below them until the fall so I can seed it and have it grow quick. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. too hot now. No, it's the best time to seed it. So you can front the waddles with, with stone. That, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's basically going to be some boulders that I have left on the lot. And, and the boulders just going to be one course, so they're going to be maybe 12 inches, 18 inches high, and I just want to fit it in. Otherwise, nine inch waddles? Uh, it, exactly, that's what's there now. It's the original waddles that we had on the property when we started construction last year that Angela walked the entire um, area and approved it all. I just want to just try to shift it over a little bit. And again, why again? I, I, I missed it. Like, the reason I'm doing it is it's hard to see in here, but this lawn actually rolls down pretty fast. It does look kind of good. Yeah, and driving the mower on there, it's just not going to tip over. You got it. It's going to tip over. So all I want to do is basically add boulders along here and backfill it with some loam to see it. So it, it's still going to be rolled off, but a much more gradual slope. All right. Okay. So here, let's call him. Yeah, we give, give me, give me, I, I can't give I'll take it as long as there's some yeah. bank accounts on there. We'll be there. And then this will kind of wrap up on what I'm trying to do for landscaping on the property. And then once I get that done, I'm going to try to get the edge. Uh, okay. Well, I need to have Andy and Jerry finish all that. Nick, yeah. Nick, what would you need in your files so when uh, this is all done, that you can go out and say, okay, yeah, this is according to his plan or something? So, can, 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 can we leave it to you to work with him to get some kind of 
plan for your file? Yeah, as far as I understand, um, you know, written communication with pictures and a basic breakdown of it. That, I was told that's enough, so I'm going to print this out and add it to the files, but Fine. that's enough for me. Yeah, but no. Okay. That's it. As far as I'm concerned, I'm good. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, yeah. Uh, so what do we need? Do we need to we need to, we need to approve this? Approve the approve modification. modification. Okay. Yep. All right. Then I'll, I'll uh, entertain a motion to ex to approve the modification to the existing order conditions for two seventy five yeah. Exchange Street, um, with the yeah. saying that that Nick and the homeowner will work together as best they can to to, to provide to uh, provide us with the, the proper documentation. Yep. Sure. Sound good. Yep. And I would just ask you to yeah send, send me pictures, you. progress, and then once everything's done. Sure. And basically, what I'll do is next week I'll start putting the boulders in place. Sure. And then I'm going to wait until the fall time to bring any bowl there. All right. It would be possible to notify Nick when 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 he places those bowls in case he's, mm -hmm. he's able to stop by. Oh, certainly. Okay. Certainly. Yeah. Right. It'll take me a while because they're going to be decent sized boulders that yeah. I'll be moving by hand. Oh, well, it's good to ask. Better you than me. Yeah, I, I've got a, yeah, I've got a small Kubota tractor that I can bring from my lawn and place it in there. Uh, but most of the movement, because it slopes down, and I'll be coming from that end. They'll be hand hand done. Mm -hmm. And if you actually go by there, you can see boulders all on the other side of the property that I did exactly the same thing. Okay. I didn't want anything to leave the site. When I did the work, I wanted to use all the boulders, leave as many trees, mm -hmm. even the way you. Paul sort of had it, as okay. much as possible. Mr. Brown here has been very communicative to me, and just looking back to the records, I know he was very communicative with, with Angela before, so. Okay. With Angela along the way, every single step I kept her in the loop and asked yep. her for guidance, so okay. I'm trying to do, even though this is minor, I want to make sure I oh, appreciate do that. the right way. Mm -hmm. So again, so I'll 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 I'll, I'll that in motion to to approve the modification to the existing order for 275 Exchange Street. Uh, again, with the with the conditions that I mentioned before about uh, communication. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Richard. This modification. Second. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you, Mike. Ken. Aye. Aye. Liz. Aye. And Chuck. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Aye. Five zero. Thank, Thank you very much for your time, folks. You're welcome. Do I receive something formally saying it's been approved, or is this? Uh, this is um. The public record, it should be fine. Okay. I'll, I'll double check on that, but as I just got uh, I got the modification and it's on record that we approved it, so it should be all all good. All right, perfect. Thank you, folks, for your time. I right, thank you. It. If you really want anything. something, he can send you an email. <laughs> I could, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe, you you can do that. I mean, that's, you yeah, do that would be a soap fancy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I try to keep track of it. That, that's good to have. You're yeah. keeping up on it, so we appreciate yeah. it. It, it is. is. It is. Especially, I mean, things change. People change. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't go change in my mind, though. Only five of us. Six of us. Only five of the six of us just changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. New, new, fairly new, very new, totally new, Easy. <laughs> extremely new. Easy. So it's very different than my extension that I got last fall. Yeah, 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 I, I think Liz would be the only one that this, would this, this is still here. Well, yeah. Chuck, Chuck using anger. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Thank you again, Mr. Right. Right. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm. All right, moving on. Uh, 348 Pier Street, DP file number 199-1112. Didn't we? So we had, we, we yeah, uh, 98 Farm Hill Road is 1112. Do we have, do we have uh, misidentified DP file numbers here? Yeah. Uh, probably, but I will double check on uh, which one should be which. Okay. But uh, for, as far as 348 Pier Street goes, doesn't matter to us anymore. Um, the, there was a modification request for the old property owner and through some happenstance, um, one of the abutters that was here actually bought the property. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the abutters to this property. Oh, right. Right. They bought that lot, so there's not gonna be any construction on it. Right. No. So, so, so the modification, so, so, that, so we're just taking it off. So that's dead. Yeah. Okay, all right. Is there anything official we have to do? No, we'll just let it down. Okay, all right. Yeah. And that owner was here tonight. That yes, was, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, moving on to extension permits. Uh, 96 Exchange Street, Herons Landing. DP file number 199-1061. This is just a ongoing agenda item added mm -hmm. for an item. Yes. Yeah. So then again, nothing we need to do here, correct? So we need know, to... We, uh, this is revisit in June, because the extended expiration is July 3rd. Right, so I did visit the site. I've tried to get in contact with the previous rep from i think it's Whit whitman and bingham mm -hmm. doing it his name was kent uh and he connected me with a uh, mark that's working on this now and he said um get back to nick when you get back so i don't know how when he's getting back i haven't heard back from him yet um 
I spoke to Mia about this. They haven't put in for anything, but the DP uh, circuit uh, writer. Yes, yeah, the the circuit writer with DP Mia, um, and they haven't put in anything. She recommends that we uh, give them an extension because I visited the site. It's like an active site right now. They're halfway through. They're nowhere near getting done. Yeah. So instead of not issuing the extension and then having making them stop work, she suggested just issue the extension beyond, as, beyond the July 3rd date. Beyond the July okay. 3rd date, and then okay. we'll, I'm gonna continue to try and get in contact with them and okay. tell them they have to come before us and you know explain what's going on. Okay. But yeah, it's been it's been here forever, right? So yeah, but they were supposed to, they're supposed to file for an extension 30 days before the expiration, but they still haven't. Okay. File anything, but right. again, that was me as a recommendation, just to continue it because it's an active site. Okay. So. All right. All right. Good. You know, good luck with that then. All right. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Communications contacted by Jack Dill about so, land uh, donation to couple. I, I think we. I think we have to uh, oh. vote to extend that. Oh, oh we do. Oh, yes. okay. All right. So uh, fact track that. Okay. So we need to make a vote to extend the expiration date. Yes. Yeah, so I'll have to. Because next time we're going to meet is going to be after July 3rd. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So we need to, so. So what, what, sure. what, what are a motion to uh, extend the expiration date to a date that you will agree on with the applicant at a, before the next meeting? Sure. If we can do that, yeah. Sure. All right. Fine. All right, then I'll understand motion to extend the expiration date for 96 Exchange Street uh, to a date to be determined by a conversation between Nick and the applicant. Mm -hmm. With a certain limit to that, please. Yeah, if they're in community, then right. I know. Yeah. I, 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 three months, two months. I can, I give them three months. Let's do three months, and then they, they have to actually yeah. go through the process. Right. Of, yeah. yeah. I would agree. Yeah. All right. All right. I mean, how much time have they had already? I, 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 I can't remember this, okay. this thing not being on the agenda. So, <laughs> so why are we going to give them another three months? Then I think that's excessive. What, what do you? What would you suggest? Okay. I'd say thirty days. Okay, I'm good with that. Okay, okay. thirty days is fine with me. Sure. And move it one way or the other. So it goes to August second, from July third to August second. Ken, Ken's our new hammer. You you bring up a good point. Yes, they should thirty days. Deal with it, or mm -hmm. or it should go away. Yep, yeah. yeah. agreed. But okay, you, know, you should yeah. carry it meeting after meeting after. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we like to resolve this. Oh, so yeah. 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 And she said this. I know. It's kind of a it's catch twenty two because she's, Mia explained to me, you know, if we, if we were to just deny it right now, they would have a good grounds for appeal because there's no one here. Right. It's their responsibility to show up and defend it, but they're still the case is that they're still not here, so they could come in and say, you know, we didn't have a chance to. So now we can give them a final notice. Yeah. Give them a thirty-day deadline. Two more meetings. And that's it. Yeah, two more meetings. And sure. then we'll take it. Okay, so that sounds fine. So thirty days. Sounds good. Right. I like that. Okay. So, dude, we we had a motion and a, and a second, right? Oh, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, we didn't. Had, no, not fine. yet. Okay. So so we'll uh, I'd like to make a motion to. Basically, accept accept Ken's um, suggestion for Nick to get in touch with them and to give them a thirty day deadline to get in front of us. That that that's basically it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Make him pub. So, take that motion. I'll, I'll make a motion. All okay, right. Thank you. Second it. Thank you, Ken. Liz. Well, I. Rich. Aye. Chuck. Aye. All right. Good. Thank you, Ken. Days. All right. Moving on, so again, okay, communications. Contacted by Jack Dill about land donation to conservation. Yeah, so uh, Jack called I'm sorry, me. I'm sorry, Conservation Commission. I didn't miss the second line. Land donation to Conservation Commission, Water Tower Plaza map and parcel 237-2C. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, so I forwarded that uh, to the mayor's office. I spoke to some people in City Hall. Apparently that's the, the mayor kind of makes the final decision on some of these things, or at least the next step, so. Uh, I haven't heard back from him on his status of it, but Jack told me, um, you know, it's about 30 acres. It's behind Water Tower Plaza. It's also behind Doyle Fields. Oh. Hmm? How is that possible? Doyle Field. It's not, maybe it's across from Doyle Fields. There's like tennis courts or something over there. Oh, and yeah, then there's right. the, yep. the woods that go down. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see. And well, it's kind of on the other side, it butts up against Route 2. Yeah. Well, what are our places with Applebee's and Barnes and Noble? Yes. 
Yeah. I had no idea there was a big green spot down there. So it's behind, it's like southeast yeah. of that. The west, the west, the west portion of that property has a little wetland area. A water tower plaza? Yeah. The no, southeast. The Doyle. Oh, the Doyle? Uh, yeah, yeah. On the east, so that's the same one. So on the west side of this is Doyle Field. On the north of this is water tower plaza. And then to the northeast, east is Route 2. Route 2. So it's kind of like right in the middle of everything. Interesting. But it's a pretty good uh, green spot there. And yeah. uh, a lot of wetlands. It's not, I can't imagine anything really getting done with that property in terms of you know, development. This guy so. just wants to give it to the city? He's owned it for a while. It's in his company's name. I think it's North Star or something, but he's owned oh, Johnny, it for- Johnny Lestella? Johnny Lestella? Uh, no, the guy's name is Jack Dillis. Or Jack Dill. Jack Dill, it says here. Jack Dill, yeah, Jack so, Dill. So one good. concern, and the mayor will be aware of this, that was the site of Foster Grant. And there was quite a cleanup mm. problem yeah. okay. there. That, yeah, you um, don't want to require a super fun site. Right. The city, the mayor will know that, so it, um, probably wouldn't want to uh, take ownership of it if there's any other cleanup that has to be done. No, the so, yeah, right. the man is trying to make a gift to the city, and you're looking the gift horse in the mouth. I know. <laughs> yeah. it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna be an eight million dollar remediation project. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> but you're aware of that too, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, just keep it, keep us posted. Sure, yeah. yeah. All right, let's do a post in the mayor's office. All right, yeah. Get it on, on that. Uh, yeah, no, just wait to hear back from there. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, nothing under meeting minutes. Uh, oh, meeting oh, minutes, minutes, actually, um, Caitlin Huffman in the city clerk's office, I guess her husband was doing meeting minutes before this. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, but she said that he's be, he'd be willing to pick that up again. Oh. Um, I looked in my file, and the only meeting minutes I could find were from April 26th and May. It was like April 26th and the one before or after that. I think it was May 10th. But those are the only two meeting minutes, meetings that have minutes that I could find. Okay. So we're going to pick up starting with the last one, mm -hmm. and he'll continue going through with these minutes. And I'm, I, as far as I understood, there was a big backlog of meeting mm -hmm. minutes, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'll have to find out where exactly that and uh, so okay. we need to catch up on it. Right, we stay current and then back into the other one. Right. That's but he's going to be, he's going to pick up on that, so we'll have a... Uh, you going to answer it? This is potential spam. Uh, I don't think I'm going to answer it. good chance. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to pick that up and we'll have meeting minutes. Okay. For rolling out again. All right, good. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be good if you get those, get those cleared out. All right. All right. Enforcement, 803 Pleasant Street. Correspondence from current owner's attorney. Past cease and desist order. Yes. So I know I didn't have anything on that before. Uh, Mark had, he mentioned this on the last meeting that Mark was actually filling Mark in. Mark Pamarini. Mark Pamarini, yes. Okay. Um, he mentioned that they, we got a communication from a lawyer representing the applicants. Mm -hmm. And they said that we were outside of the three year expiration. Um, and he, Mark was waiting on our lawyer at the time to check on that and correspond, and our lawyer did get back to Mark and said that uh, he agrees with, with their lawyer's oh. um, interpretation of it. So we are outside of the expiration. I think you made a point about, you know, we can't keep. I agree with it also based right. on my reading of the yeah. But we were just, he was just waiting to hear back from the lawyer just to make sure it was good, and, and that's apparently. Okay, so, so basically, there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, so we just got to forget about the enforcement. Off the agenda. 803. Off the agenda. <laughs> All right. So that's what happened. So, and, and we don't, don't need to do anything. No, nope. just officially do it. Just leave it die. All right. All right. Moving on. 1775 Walk Drive, working 200 foot riverfront area, crosses 323 1 and 323 13, cease and desist order. Mm -hmm. So, again, uh, Mark started to go over this before. Um, he, they were doing a lot more work uh, than they had put on the NOI. They're back and way up mm -hmm. close to the river. Mm -hmm. um, you guys probably, you know, recall. Yep. Uh, but he did issue an enforcement order. I'm just going to need you guys to sign this. I guess we can do that after. I wanted, to, I wanted to read it first. I had asked for a copy of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, I have both of them right here, so you can take a look at it. We never asked for an enforcement order as a commission. 
Okay. That was something that Mark did on his own. Yeah. We okay. had had a discussion with the owners there on the site, and they come to agreement. Yeah. So we had an agreement. Sure enforcement yeah. order was needed. Okay, I didn't know. I was, I was just I, spoke to Mark I about it. I mentioned that at one point. But yeah, maybe that was with Angela in her last days. I thought it was both. Yeah, these were yeah. Mark, but so I was, was I was down there this mm -hmm. week. Oh, were you good? And it doesn't seem there are so many trucks there now. There's far more traffic in there than there was when we were originally um, when we visited the mm -hmm. site. Um, there's crash trucks. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of, of stuff there. So. Um, I think we ought to pay them a visit. Had they, does it look like they done anything in terms of pulling that asphalt it back? Did, it did not look okay. like that to me, but there were so many trucks that you couldn't where, really see. Right, where is this town? By the old, old, behind the old By Mo 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 Mohawk. Mohawk yeah. Drive. Mohawk Drive. Mm -hmm. You get on the end, take a left. Okay. So last, uh, second to the last building is a marijuana. Oh, yeah, right. right. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you fall in the river, you've gone too far. Yeah. yeah. I agree with Mike's problem. suggestion that we do a revisit. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I, I can drive. I can go in there anytime yeah, myself. I'll make sure you guys. Yeah. A lot of stuff. What was the question? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in, yeah. in that, that whole area. And that way yeah. we, can, we can determine as to what they've done versus what we had said, at least as what we remember we said. Right, right. And you know, if they've done nothing, then they'll jump on an enforcement yeah. order with you. Mm -hmm. If they've moved far, maybe you know, we'll see if it's needed or it's just part of the NOI. If they've gone outside of it, so it would be good to... Who's the owner? Uh, Zaris? Yeah. Yes. James yeah. Zaris. Margo Zaris. So you can so schedule that, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll get that together and see if we can all go out same time or get a couple that's going. Yeah, and, and it's not like I said, I, I can I can just drive down. I'll try to go with, with one or more of you folks. If not, I can just drive down the way. So sure. And I'd love to still love to see the the copy of that. Yeah. If you can email yeah. it or yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. All right. That. I'll email it. Look ahead of time because we do use it. Yeah. But they're not aware of that, correct? Mark said that they are aware. He said that he spoke to Zeros about oh, your question about the ship about the enforcement yeah. order. Yeah. Okay. 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 I spoke to them today, so that we should be great. Yes. Okay. If they could be there to meet with us on our site visit, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. better. Yeah. Because yeah. then we can get answers. Yeah. No. He, I mean, he, yeah. he seemed more than amenable, and it, it seemed like just, it was just yeah. temporary until they, until they, they did yeah. the work in the building. They can keep the trucks inside. It was, it was a good, you know, amicable discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd like to watch, see what happens with it. All right. <laughs> All right. Just before we get the hammer down. Yeah. <laughs> Ken's our hammer, by the way. That's right. I was looking at what he's talking. All right, last one under enforcement. <coughs> North Street parcels 297-27 and 297-28 Hughes Group Corp. Tree removal within 200 feet of wetlands, cease and desist order. So yeah, as the last one, I know it's like copy and pasted from previous uh, things, but I was able to talk to Mark again. Um, he issued the enforcement order. I'm sure you're probably familiar with mm -hmm. what was going on there. Um, again, I just he was the only one to sign it because it was kind of an emergent thing, so I just need you guys to, <laughs> okay. to sign that. I'll be glad to sign that. All right, yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That's where they're sli slicing, dicing trees like crazy. Yeah. Right? And he said that these people are also aware of the enforcement order, so they've been talked to. And okay. You know, what's well, going to happen? Any, any indication of what their response was? Are they... Uh, I haven't. He. I know for Lock Drive, we're supposed to hear back from him about replication because uh, Mark contends that they haven't pulled back anything. They still need to come before us and you know talk about what they're going to do. Um, I think for this, he said that they just need to stop. Yeah. I, I want to know what, what their plans were there. I mean, they, were, they, they, they didn't. The reason they didn't go any further is because the 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 the, the, the the equipment, no, the equipment, the equipment that we used because the trees stuck. down got stuck in the mud. Right. Or the, the guy didn't want to get stuck in the mud. Mm. Wow. And, and they um, should, they should have known better. If I recall. So I want to, I want to, what the hell are they thinking? Well. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, and and uh, uh, barring anything else, honestly, if if they just pull that stupid shed out of there yeah. and stop doing it, let it let it grow back. I might be fine with me, but we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, let's keep it posted on that, please. That was we'll ridiculous. Do. I'm glad those folks came in about that. That was good. Uh, emergency certifications, none. Budget, nothing on here. Did you, I know you had a question about budget. the budget. Yeah, I, keep, uh, uh, I do budget. have... I don't know 
know how helpful this is, but the comptroller's office was able to print this off for me. So it's got a lot of the expenses for like um, advert legal ads, like phone bills, whatever. But then it's got our total budget left over, about six dollars, six thousand dollars. Six dollars left over there. It's accounting that a bunch, correct? That's I guess it's it's just, it's just budget report. It's the budget report. That's the, that's the best I got for you right now. If there's somewhere there's hiding a budget for our power up. Yes. <laughs> the budget is established by fees, correct? The budget is the budget. established, uh, yeah, they, I, as far as I know, like about once a year, everyone gets together and you, know, you have to defend why, how right. much you need the budget and right. it's based off of what you spent. Oh, before. I thought we were self-sustaining in, in, in the, uh, the application fees and everything else. Our, our little key. Uh, uh, I, think uh, I think we get some extra money as well from that, yeah. Hmm. What badges? Or we, I think it's like we're allotted however much in the budget, and some of that's for office supplies, some of that's for legal ads, yep. um, but we're allotted a budget for that, and then we. Yeah, we pay out of that. Um, and then when the checks come in, that just goes to the city. But it's like, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly how it works. So yeah. if I'm reading this correctly, they, they were appropriated $14,114. We have spent 8036 so far, and we've got 6077 left. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. But I know some of the stuff is weird in there. They're kind of like... Fiscal years up in October. Uh... I believe they were telling me anything that I need to spend, like on office supplies or anything, I should try and spend by the end of the month. Is it July 1st? That's what they sure. tell me. Yeah. So spend your money in. Yeah, yeah, I know. If you don't spend it, you're going to lose it. I know. I know I like, steal my money right. also. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if you need something. Takes, no, I realize yeah. it. That's, that's, that's what they said, said, yeah. Get it out of last year so that, you know, you can have all next year. Ooh, right. Right. But not beyond, not uh, you know, a couple little things for the office. I don't really, I don't have any big expenses that I know of that th this would need to go towards. Okay. So I'll spend as much as I can of it, but. And I know some of that is weird, like she coded some things like in the wrong category, like it would have been office supplies, but it was coded as like legal ads, for example. So I think that messed up with some of the, the categories in the budget too, so. But the category, it doesn't matter. The money is the total budget is accurate, yeah, but Okay. Okay, so, so all three of you can come up with the actual original budget someday. Yeah. See how it's what categories there are and you know what do we have money and what's it gonna cost to hire what the delineators if right. we yes. yeah. want and so yeah. on. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the budget was submitted last year by Angela Burm. Yeah. That'd be good. All right. Thank you. Anything else? For no? Okay. So next meeting is July 12th, 2022. Filing deadline was last Friday at noon. With that, I'll, I'll uh, accept a motion to adjourn. I'll so move to adjourn. I will second. Thank you. Can I? Aye. Liz? Chuck? Aye. Meeting adjourns. <laughs>